here's what I got. Well, the first thing you want to do is hang him to thaw him out, uh, usually by a leg or something. And sometimes, um, you know, that leather string uh, works real good for, like, hanging these birds up. Or a string. Sometimes a rope, you can't get it around the bottom of their legs where it'll hold. You got a ring neck duck. You got the breastplate right here down the middle. And the breastplate has, like, a bone right down the middle of it. I tend to cut to one side or the other of that and kind of wedge up against it when I cut. And, you know, the difference between the right or left side of, making, of that bone making the incision don't matter much. So what I'm going to do is find that bone and try to cut through the one side or the other. And it's kind of hard to cut right on top of it, that's what I mean. Um, I cut up from underneath. Now you do a lot less damage that way. I'm just cutting right down that bone. He's a little froze. I'm going to stretch his wings out. He is a little bit froze, I think. His legs, I stretched his legs out. Well, even his legs are froze. Keep going right down with this. At least I know he's, uh, you know, he's kind of fresh, but he's still froze like this. So, so I go right down that breastbone. Separating the wool, so I should be able to. Uh, once you start seeing that skin, you know, you can. Uh, these guys take a while to uh, thaw it out. Well, he's still a little froze, that's usually a good thing. Unless they're so froze that, you know, you can't really move the skin much. I'm kind of in a. But you can see, there's the breast bone, that main bone that goes right down the middle. My incision usually tends to find one side or the other of that. And then I use that breast bone as a guide and I just run on. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit on the right or a little bit to the, you know, the right or left of that main bone, as long as you're, as long as that main bone is your center good enough. And then you just start peeling the membrane back. Uh, hard to see with my fingers in the way, I'm sure. But there's membrane, I spread, spread the membrane around uh, apart with my fingers. Now down here, I can go towards the anus. I see the anus, so I, I know I'm on track, so I can just get up under the skin there. Um, try not to cut through the, uh, you know, the intestines and all that, but a lot of times I fail, especially on birds that are froze. It's real easy to not be able to guide where you're. Probably ought to do it this way, actually, sideways so you can see what's going on. But you can see, separate the membrane. You can see the, the breastbone. I'm going to go up. About where the breast stops is where I like to go. And I think it's right before the, the black stalk starts here. So I'm thinking, probably up almost far enough. But you can see the breastbone, barely because it's frozen. But basically what I'm doing is pulling back, exposing the membrane, running, running the corner of my blade, my exacto knife over it, and just getting it to separate. Um, even when I'm being a little bit froze, a lot of times you can still cut that membrane and get it to move. Um, This right here. Try to leave most of the meat on the body if I can. Just less work for me when I'm fleshing the you know, skin out. The main thing is to get down there towards the anus. Between the skin and the meat, and uh, run my 
tack or knife off of it. Just get the tin and pull back where you see that membrane. And right down here at the anus. Uh, keep on separating. This bird's froze like a rock on the inside. They got so much good insulation, which is good, it'll keep them alive, you know. In the extreme cold weather, no doubt. I don't know if you can see it, you have to look real close at their membrane, cut my knife over it, expose it, pull back, cut my knife over a little bit more membrane, expose it, pull it back. Can you get to the joints that we got to the cut through, which are the wing joints and the leg joints. When you stretch it back on the skin, you'll see that white membrane. Run my point of my edge over it, just keep separating out. Well, his body's still frozen really good, but there's a few things I can do while he's thawing out. Um, you know, since I'm on him, you know. But, but I can grab this tongue. Yeah, here we are. See, if it bleeds, you may have to throw a little bit of, I don't know, a paper towel down in there. You've got plenty of that if you need to. Yeah, you're bleeding pretty bad. Uh, borax down in there can always help. You know. Bleeding, put a paper towel. If you ain't bleeding, uh, you know, uh, you're good to go. I can go ahead and skin the head out. Uh, the head's thawed out and disconnect the neck from it. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. And that way I can at least skin the head out while the body's still frozen. So that's what we'll do. There's a little white cut there. I may want to go behind that. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Um, I'm going to make an incision right down the bottom. I'm going to right down the bottom. Make sure everything's kind of straight. The jaws are right there. And I'm just going to go right up under the skin. I'm going to cut nothing else. Just right up under the skin. the end of the jaw, which is right there. You don't want to make things seem any longer than you have to, that's for sure. Right there, I think I'm good right there. We're going to go with that. Feel that. We're doing the same thing. You separate the membrane, pull back on the skin, separate the membrane. You can see it right there. You can see where the I pull back on the skin, expose the meat right there, and then I just run my... On the head, it's kind of invisible almost. It's clear. But you, know, you just run your knife over it. You get where it's going. Here, even. On the other side. I pull back on that skin and expose all this. And leave as much meat on the bird as, as I can when I skin him out. It's just less work and labor if we can do it. You know, we don't run into some shock damage. But here I'm, uh, if you look close right here, my finger is. That's a lot of meat that can just, can you see where I'm separating that skin? And that's just the lower jaw. Put them down far enough. We keep my hair a bit, but not much. More. Right here is a little bit of membrane. Right up here where the beak is. A little bit holding it. All this comes off. So. Can you see the membrane? Uh, see where I'm at? Pull them back on the skin and I can see membrane and cut through it. What I want to do. 
and the other side the same way. It's all meat that can stay on the bird right there, but it's still our job. Just move right now. Yeah, his neck is still attached really good. Usually I cut him off at the neck. Uh, see what we can do. I'm doing this thing backwards. I don't need to be doing that. But, um, just want to save time. And right here. In other words, I haven't cut to the neck yet. I usually cut to the neck and, and everything is familiar. Um, I didn't cut to the neck, so everything is not familiar to me. It's like branching in a new territory. Cut that neck. Right back here, behind the uh, throat area, I can, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on the neck right now. At the base of the stool. So now I should be able to do just like I would if the bird was, um, if the body was out of the bird. And it's working, but uh, making a mess. You can see it's working. Things are looking familiar again because I snipped the neck. But the neck is still in there, so it's still a little bit odd to me. What that means is we cut anything that's holding small bits of meat, ligaments and stuff right there. There we go. See, I'm already at the steam. Oh, yeah. Familiar territory. Okay. Now, the first thing you're going to do you're going to run up on the ears. The ears, the first thing we're going to come to, you can already see it. There's like something going down into the head. Well, that's his uh, ear canal. Go ahead and cut through it. First thing you're going to come to is the ear canal. Cut through the ear canal. We just keep working forward. There's that little hole. That is his ear canal. We go around. Look at all that membrane is separating. Piece here and there trying to hold. Yeah. We get the air canal on the other side. And then you can see how I done the one side. And then I'll let you see how I do this side. There's the air canal. Bring your knife to it. Voila. What you're going to do is you're going to do is yeah, there is a the back of the eye socket. I can already see it. I can feel it. I can see it. And I've done so much. It's almost like muscle memory. You do it a while. You know, kind of. You know, like muscle memory. But you can see that. And at the back of the orbit, I'll skin that skin down like this. Right to where I can see the black of the eyeball. I cut right through that skin there. Stuff's gonna come off this path. They're not like a 
like some of your Upland game birds. They're a little bit different. They got a lot more, uh, you know, stuff to do. Two good little eyes going looks like. Um, I'm cutting behind the eye already. Uh, don't need to cut behind the eye already. But I can see that clear membrane. a little piece of skin on top of the eyeball. All birds have it, whether they're upland or not. And as you come forward, you just keep the peel cutting through that, whether you're exact or not. See, I went through the eyeball, uh, over the eyeball, that thin layer of skin. I got a good sharp exact on my working it for me. Now I'm going forwards, making sure not to cut the wrong stuff. See, so here's the here's the eyelid or the eyeball or the skin around the eye starting to come open. Starting on that bone where the beak starts, you know. Basically, the beak is part of the bone, but you got skin that goes down so far, if that makes any sense. It's kind of a good start on this side, now we do the other side the same way. Borax on here. I notice everything's going up, even the price of borax has went up. Don't worry. But, okay, that's another story. Okay, so. now I'm still using my. pull back on this uh, I hear I'm at the eye orbit here's the eye orbit right here you done went through the ear canal on both sides okay I'm at the eye orbit okay I like to peel as forward as I can I can see the top of the eyeball look at look how thin this membrane is that little hole, that's transparent skin that goes over the eyeball. I'll have to cut that off and work my way forwards. That way I know I didn't cut anything I wasn't supposed to. I use it as assurance. When I cut over that little skin over the eyeball, that's how I know I didn't go too far.
And when I pull with my fingers, look at all of this that needs to be cut. Right there, in front of the eyeball, right there. All this fat right here, some membrane. Forwards, got cut to the skin. So I always got to be aware of that I'm on bone right here on top of the eye. In the inside corner of the eye, but kind of like on top, that's the bone you fill up the skull. So I just uh, I see that white membrane and I rake my blade over and it disappears. And you can take it down too far or too far where you start cutting the skin. It's connected to the beak. Um, that's when you know you went a little too far, I'd stop. But okay, right there. So I'm going forward with it. We go, go down in between the eye. That's the top of the beak. There's an indention there. See, you can take the skin down before I get there. And that white membrane keeps showing up, and you just uh, throw your blade over it, and it'll pop right up. Right here on the side. Right here. Right here on the top, see? Get close. Actually, the feather patterns have started. You'll see like a little dark spot right there. That's where the feathers have started. Right on the inside upper corner of the beak. Up on top. Um, same thing on this side. That's how you know you've kind of went far enough. That's the way I look at it. Just want to go as far as you can. It's a paradox. You want to get close as you can without going too far. So you got to be careful. Just as sure as there's a little bit of black showing right here on the bottom beak. That it means I went as far as I can on the bottom beak. Uh, went definitely as far as I can on this beak down here. Okay. So you get down as far as you can, and uh, you start. To, I run my knife through an eyeball. Just like you would a fish if you've done fish before. I'm running around and then maybe a little up underneath if I can. Okay. So forth. Here are the hemostats. Get under the eyeball. Pull it right off. See a lot of stuff down in there that's got to come off. That's where the borax comes in handy. We do the same thing to this side. Uh, get in that eye socket right on the side of the eye. You can go all the way around with your ejection knife. Like that eyeball. start cutting meat off. Um, even on top of the head there's like a thin layer of skin and I'll get that off. I 
comes off real easy. Around the eye orbit itself, there it is. Um, a little bit of beat up pop that can come off. Use the help with hemostats, whatever you need to get that stuff out. Pull mainly just meat. I know there's like a, I wouldn't call them pins, but it looks like kind of like bone structure on the side of the jaw. And you know, you've got your lower jaw. I'll leave all that in. You know, it's it's soft enough where it can almost be like cartilage, but it's not. So I get all this other stuff that can come off. I'll make sure I get it off. Or it can help you out too a little bit, you know, if you get some of that stuff. Right here in the back of the head, look at all this meat right here. A lot of meat. See? Look at all that meat right there. It's going to come off. It's behind the lower jaw, kind of. So I get my blade go right behind my lower jaw. Trying to get this stuff up. Do the other side the same way. This meat out, big chunks of it. You gotta use your exacto knife, get up in there, and hope it'll come out. Oh, there's a BB right here in the face. Look at that. So, uh, yeah, we got shot, and some of it hit his head. But not bad, no bone really broke. So, uh, Whether he knows it or not, he did a good job, that's for sure. So, get some of that stuff up. Got some of that stuff out. You get the idea, though. If you make it spotless without taking out too much, you know, like uh, some stuff you want to keep in there, the bones, I guess you could call it bones. Like, some of the bone structure, like the lower jaw bone, you definitely want to keep that. There's tendons connected right here to the lower jaw, bone on the side. Um, I tend to keep this one right here. It's very thin, but yeah, I tend to keep it. Yeah, there's meat under there that can come off. Dry preservative on their bird, there's nothing wrong with that. I've done it myself. It's just borax is so cheap, all you gotta do is go to the store to get it. Probably depends on where you're at, too. 
We have more expertise than on squirrels and everything else. You know, you know some of the thinner, a lot smaller animals and stuff. It definitely comes in real handy on fish. For a long time, that's all I used. And it's fine, you know. Keep it in there, you know, keep the fish in there a minimum of like 14 hours, I think, is what they say. A minimum. 14 hours. And then, see up under this one bone here, I'm grabbing some of that stuff, pulling it out. Well, I'll get with you a little bit later when we, uh, Right here in the back, we're gonna saw right, saw the back of the head off so we can install the neck, the neck wire. <coughs> but yeah, just keep cleaning it out, make sure there's nothing in the eye orbit. Any meat that's connected around these bones, you know, they can they can come out. Go ahead and get it. Exacto knife and a good pair of hemostats. And get that stuff up. And uh, I get back really short with it. Right in here, all that meat, see how that borax brought it up? I pour the little borax in there. And you get that exact on how to grab that meat. And it has nothing else to do but come up. The borax helps a lot too. It brings it up real good. It's not so slimy and you can grab a hold of it and all that other good stuff. all this around here. If I can get my knife under it, I'll put it off. It wants to stay on there sometimes. Right there is the high order. There's a little bit of string meat right around there that can come off. And we gotta go ahead and get it off. Now as far as perfection on these, um, get as good as you can within reason. And let borax take care of the rest of it, you know what I mean? That's, that's the way I do it. I also have artificial heads nowadays. A lot of people are going to those. I've used them before. You know, I just happen to have a bird's skin out and the person had an artificial head. And when I got the bird, I just mounted it up with the artificial head. And I just super glued the skin back in place. And it looked good. So you will get stuff like that from time to time. Uh, keep working on that and I'll get back with you uh, a little bit later you know that's looking a world of difference now already uh, so I've got to do some cutting and picking of course but, uh, we'll do the other side the same way uh, and I'll get back with you I went ahead and threw some borax on it I'm going to go ahead and reinvert the head let's see and let him finish thawing out the rest of the way um, there's a whole lot of stuff on the neck, but it'll all come out in the wash, if you know what I mean. It'll all come out in the wash. Now I got us plenty of borax in there. We at least need to be preserving them while I'm waiting on the rest of them to thaw out. And so, uh, we have plenty of borax on this guy. Um, I'll give him a few more hours. We should be fine then, I'd say. The wings look like they're already ready. It's those legs. Oh, he's starting. I give him about two or three, about two or three more hours, and he'll be ready. 
and I'll get back with you then. Right now, he's just still solid frozen. It's been a good little while. Um, I should be able to really, oh yeah, it is doing a lot easier. I mean, that memory is just cut and separated so easy now. A lot easier than it was. Right here in the front, separating. Uh, it's hard to see the all the bit before, actually. Yeah, definitely waited long enough, so he's ready now. All this blood right here will wash out, so uh, I don't worry about it. I use that relaxer degreaser by McKenzie. Um, it does wonders. I use it on hogs, and birds, and uh, it's amazing. Use it on my hog and that skin was bone dry. Not a, not a bit of grease or anything on it. That's in a previous video. You're right here at the tailbone. So you can come down with it there. You know, the tailbone, you'll see it on the turkey and everything. These two little bones right here. Get down past that side. I don't get close to the end of this. Right here on the sides. Separate the memory down. You gotta separate it out. Love the memory. It's just the uh, type of four, same old, same old. So now I can actually do it because it's not frozen. I'm up here right here at the neck. Or where the neck starts, I should say. I'm going from the side here, free up some skin so I can do my other tasks, such as cutting through the wing joints and all that other good stuff. challenges itself. The ducks are definitely a lot more greasier than like a green egg pheasant. This guy's got the grease. This, this guy's loaded with fat. Bend uh, that leg and push up on his thigh. That's his thigh right there. Right there, that knee joint right there. Just like on the pheasant or any bird. I automatically kind of I can feel where the joint separates. That's the right word. 
It's separate, so I've kind of done with that for now. There's the tailbone in here. Grab the hands. I just keep bringing stuff down. I don't know whether there's much rhythm to it, really. He didn't want to go ahead and free his tail up, which uh, will come in handy because you'll have to a lot of loose skin when I separate the wings from the body. I'm about to cut to the wing joints. So right here. You'll see his tail bone right there. And uh, getting close to the anus and all that. Birds have a lot of fat compared to their upland game birds. Mm -hmm. Well, these little things, uh, they're buoyant. This hole, but I've got a little tension. That's the only reason the feathers are 
shown here. Yeah, that's his animus. On there, we got to cut the tailbone to start on the back side. So, I'm going to give an educated guess. That was it. You can see the glands right here. Or two big round organs or something. I guess you could say. separate. What I'll do later is I'll hang it up. I, use, I got a wire and I hang it up, I don't know, under this tailbone and that'll uh, hold it good enough where I can uh, ski him out uh, and let gravity, you know, as he's hanging, help me out in the uh, fleshing process. So now on to the wings. Get down as far as I can, as close as I can to the wing. That's kind of what I'm doing here. Pretty good and close, probably close enough on this side. We go to this side. Free some of this stuff up. See that white membrane is running my knife over to bring it down. Feel the wing joint. It's right up right into here, the upper part of the breast. I usually grab right here and move this wing. It gives me an idea of where my wing joint is. Um, I'm not going to carve a body this time, which, if you're going to carve a body, a fine body is the best one to do you know, a fine bird body. Uh, when you're flying, you know, you don't have as much uh, margin for error, I guess. You can be a little bit too big or a little bit too little with the body and still make it work. Um, but I went ahead and ordered a body. I didn't even say your particular size. I just said, uh, um, right there is where my
We'll see how good the, the body matches up with it. Yeah, you see the joint right here, the wing joint. You know, just kind of think about what you'd see on a turkey or something. Okay, here's the wings. Did the drumstick earlier, the legs. And now we're doing the wings, which is the wings. Again, in terms of food, when you're eating a turkey or buying chicken wings or something, then they will not make it a little easier. in there for a little bit of blood control, I guess. To the other side the same way. I'll try it this way. I'm usually the tail to face of me, but let me try it this way. Feel the joint. Clear some of the skin around here. This is on the side, almost on the back. extra membranes. So I've got a little bit of extra room here. be around here somewhere. Okay, everything separated. Um, time to hang it up and let gravity help me out. There you go. Get a little, little bit of a hook on a rope. And it works for my turkeys and everything. I get this hook right here. I go right behind the tailbone, kind of back a little far, so it gives me a little bit of extra, you know, grab, I guess. There's a point right there, but you get the idea. Should be plenty to hold it while I do what I gotta do. I'm gonna let gravity help me out. Um, right here, you can see it's a. Uh, just ride along the back. That's the back. Really, you can put a hole, just be more, just be conscious about putting a hole, I guess is the right word. Okay, 
things will speed up once you get around the neck. Things will start speeding up then. There's a lot of little bits of leftover meat still connected to the skin and you're going to have to cut through all that. starting to come off. You can see my white membrane that I gotta get. You know with my exact on my Separating real good. Oh wow, uh, yeah, nuts coming in. <coughs> I try to find that membrane as much as possible. Because whatever meat you can keep on the body, that's a plus, you know. It's something you don't have to worry about when you're fleshing. For where the wing bones were attached. Well, you can see it on this side real good. Well, you know the wing bones gotta come too, so. We work a little bit around here on the front a little bit. Let's uh, see what we got here. So all that membrane is just popping up. a little bit of this meat. On this side we need to cut a little bit right there above the joint. Now we're even with the neck. See how easy that was? Still some stuff connected here but that's all you know part of the body. Okay. Now we're at the neck. All the way around we're at the neck. So we're letting gravity acts like an extra hand almost. While I got it inverted, I'm going to get all that fat off his neck. If you remember, I went ahead and cut through the neck at the base of the skull, so we go ahead and flesh the skull out since he was still frozen. Which uh, I deviate from my routine sometimes. It's not very good like for explaining things new to people. For reference, real quick, just to eye it up with the bird, with the body itself. Just make sure I'm, you know, in the ballpark. Look how close of a match the artificial ring that the duck body is. It's a real good match. The length and even the width is pretty darn good. Um, 
it's even the width, as opposed to a wood duck, which is somewhat bigger. Blue Rock can get almost fit on a wood duck body, but it would be a uh, small wood duck body would work, definitely. But this one is a, I think a medium. So the neck length and thickness is important. Well, we already know that body matches up. I've got, looks like about four and a quarter and thickness, looks like about three fourths. Uh, let's see what the bird chart said. Well, here on my neck, neck chart, it's got the ring neck female, hazel eyes, ring neck male, straw eyes. But if you look back this way, All this that applies to the ruddy duck applies to the ring neck male and female ducks. Uh, the 14 gauge wire is what we're going to use across the board. <clears throat> and also, if I, I think I do got some 18 gauge, um, but if not, I'll stick with maybe 16 or something. But here the neck length is four and three fourths. I had like a four and a quarter. So I'm going to split the difference, go four and a half, and looks like neck material size five eighths. So we got five eighths neck material and four and a half on neck length. And now we can toss the body because we don't need it anymore. There's a lot of excessive blood on this bird. I may give it a quick douse, you know, just to get rid of some of that blood. I got a lot of blood out, but obviously you still got a lot of blood in me. Just a, just a whole lot here and there to deal with. And I will throw some more uh, borax on him just to kind of. We'll cut down on the blood dripping. Uh, basically, I douse it in water. All I do is grab it from the breast and go in the water and come up. That's how I do all my birds. I, you don't want to sit there scrubbing birds. Out. You know what I mean? So that's my technique. I guess you call it a dousing motion, I guess. Um, and he's got a lot coming out of his head, obviously. Mm. A lot coming out of his head. Yeah, the reason they call it a ring neck duck uh, is because of the, they like a faint brown ring around the neck. Um, it's not like a big white ring, is what it would be. I'll show you one wing and one leg. Um, boy, this is exactly not the bloody. Wow. Okay. I start skinning down the wing bone, I get, I leave all the meat I can on the bone so I can get it off. I don't want to leave it on the body, uh, you know, if you don't have to. Basically, you can see the membrane right there. Here. I'm using my fingers to pry apart. Okay. Right here. You gotta be careful though, because uh, you're gonna end up putting a hole. You're a little bit more cantankerous than the last bird I've done, that's for sure. The pheasant was a lot easier to get to what needs to be done at the same time. It was a bigger bird, and it's a duck. This is a duck, it wasn't, so. So we, uh, you know, this is the main one that comes out of the body. Well, I guess where the shoulder is, this is the shoulder one right there. Are coming forwards. This is really sticking up right there. See all these quills right there? I think those are the primary feathers. Primaries are the ones that are along this part right here. 
No, the primaries are the end ones along like the forearm area. Um, those are the primaries. These are secondaries, which are big also, but you know. Secondary feathers are those right through here. Primary are the, those, those are the biggest ones that are right there on the end there. You've seen the bird flying, that's what you're looking at. separating the membranes just like I did everything else. All birds are relatively the same. You know, the way you skin them out. So, I'll tug a little bit. See some membrane like right there. I'm starting on the uh, You know, the secondaries, maybe they do. I know the primaries, I think, are this part right in here. Primaries are on the end, secondaries are not on the end, but we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> I don't want to tell you wrong on my anatomy. I'm not an expert on anatomy. I'm going down. Sometimes it gets a little bit tougher to, to get things skin out right in here because you're dealing with, uh, with feathers, it's got to kind of bend a little bit to a certain degree. Uh, you have to lay back a certain way in order for you to get down and flesh. So it is a little bit contagious. Not too bad. So right here we're on the elbow. I don't want to cut through that joint much because it's it's strength. It's extra strength for your bird, fine bird. I hate cutting through that. Um, uh, cut through what I need to cut through to get, get it to release off that elbow and go on down. you're not cutting through the joint, you can keep from it. But those bird feathers, the quills of those bird feathers, you want those to come on down. And there they are, they're coming down. You can even help a little bit by using your fingernail. You can kind of tear it down a little bit. Or break it down. have one finger I'm using to pull with, and then I'm cutting the exact on the mouth with my other hand. Right here, you can see where it's got to come down. So,
and here's a feather from trying to stay attached to the bone. So I just run my knife right through that little, uh, the little bit of cartilage on that row of feathers on that forearm part right here. There's cartilage holding those uh, wheels on. Some people leave them connected on my like, bigger birds like turkeys, which I do. And then I just cut the meat out from the inside of that meat. But you can also break even the big turkeys. You can break them down, break those feathers off. Um, if you want it to. Coming down, just keep on doing that. Main thing is don't make a hole. That's always your one thing you don't want to do is make holes while you're skinning stuff out. It's going to happen uh, a lot. But I guess the goal is to try not to make a hole. You know, so let's work later for you. I'm using my fingernail to break those feathers off the bone there. That just helps me out. Right here at the end here. So I'm almost at the end. I'm going to get past this last joint a little bit. You know, relatively good length. So we still got some work right here.
and we're separating and going over their joint. That's what we want. the best you can do. Um, some people will pump a little denatured alcohol down into some of these hard to get parts, you know, to help preserve it. You know, I've heard people doing that. Get right here, the under part of here, looks like. typical for me. And basically at the end anyway, borax will definitely get the job done on this clean. And as far as we go down far enough. But just saying people will sometimes inject some denatured alcohol or something in there or, or you know or something uh, bird foot injection foot, some kind of preservative in there, pump it up in there, and I'll you know, get rid of some of that. So, just so I figured I'd throw that at you. Okay, we've done one wing, now we're gonna do one uh, leg. Okay, here's the leg. Still very much connected to the body. all the drums to me. Yes. Some of it's still on the body, of course, that's going to come off. And I will put that later. Okay. But this. Fine. You can see I'm just separating everything and using my fingers as leverage. Uh, pull back with my two finger, my index and middle finger. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I mean, as far down to the elbow as I can get, or that, uh, you know, far down before these, uh, you know, the feathers start. I want to get, get down as close as I can to where the feathers start. Coming down with my drumstick.
He's like the drumstick on a turkey or, or a chicken, you know, the drumstick. show you this it's got it's cut it's my next step anyway um, fleshing the legs out okay sometimes I'll pull so when you pull down on the tendon it helps you get down low where you know you need to go so you cut down as low as you can voila okay, on this side yeah, usually I'll get in there and run my knife up, but it does. It, uh, you're basically you're pulling everything off that bone. You pull down, let's let it. When you pull down, and see the tendons help you get down a little farther. When you pull, you want to go crazy with it and tear something, but it does help. So, we come back in, and voila. Now, if you're going to tumble it, a lot of people will leave the, uh, you know, these joints on in the tumbling process. And the fact is, so the sharp corners of where you maybe cut your leg joint off at the top here, um, it's not going to do no damage if it's not cut first before you start tumbling. So, uh, something to keep in mind. This one, there's like a little bit of bone that comes up the side and it'll come right off. There's just like one side where it's connected a little bit. You get that off. Yeah, a lot of people definitely will do that. They'll leave the, uh, the joint on in, in, in the tumbling process. You know, I blow dry my bird when I may do that. I mean, I had a tumbler and I used to do that. So, it's just whatever you think you, you want to do with it.
snip it off or cut it off, whatever you're going to do to get it off. Right down to here, the same thing, get all that meat off. bits of meat they have a uh, tendons right down there at the bottom so uh, I'll definitely uh, get down it's like tendon that turns into muscle you know that's how they do the muscles so I'll follow it all the way up and cut it where it turns into a tendon So all I'm doing is cleaning all that stuff out. Um, exactly my break from on the bone will get it off. Toad pull cut, there we go then. Get it off. And, uh, get some borax on there. Borax helps you pull the stuff off. Here again, I'm going to leave the joints on. We'll do that later. So after I blow grind and everything. Uh, that way I just know there's no sharp edges around. If that makes any sense. The least sharp edges you got, the better off you are. I'm going to tell you ready to run wires for the legs, you know. Don't have to do it this way, a lot of times I don't, but yeah. Just whatever you think of, whatever you think is best. And as the joints, I don't want to destroy all that cartilage. You want the bone, the wing bone to still be connected. But I will get off what I can. You know, you can destroy that. Especially skin in him out, it's hard to distinguish where the quills are and all that junk. And uh, they can do a lot of damage that way. Right? Uh, definitely don't want to destroy the joint, is what I'm getting at. I mean, it's the only thing holding the bird together. But, you know, holding the wings intact, basically. And while this stuff will come out, Snip it off or whatever. Well, you want to get them as good as you can, but where the joints are connected, there's going to be a little bit of oil there. It's just the way it is. 
can do your your part. Use bird feed injection fluid, you know, with a syringe to get in there. Yeah. Clean this up a little bit better. But basically you get the idea. Can of course. A wire wheel can even help you get some of these a little bit better. I see people do that. But I got that spinning wheel next to my skin, and that's always got me concerned, so I'm a little bit, always a little bit wary, I guess. There's a lot of bone there too, it's not all just uh, meat. So. But uh, borax is a good preservative. You see how it does on the uh, on fish. There's a little bit on the fish. And that's the number one thing people use is borax in a mixture of water. Well, there you go, folks. <coughs> Works it real good and clean it real good. Got your big boat on you. Then you do the other wing and the other wing the same way. So I'll get back with you once I get those done. Got the wings and legs skin out before we use the bird flesher. I'm going to go ahead and get what red meat I can off right now. Off the body, anyways. You know, we already got the wings and the legs pretty good. Um, but there is some fat on here that the bird flesher comes in handy getting off. Um, you know, a lot of people have used wire wheels for, you know, wire brushes for years to. Uh, do their birds and that's just what they're used to doing. So you can use like wire brushes and stuff. Get the job done, but you'll know when you've got the job done, when you got that fat off. This bird is full of fat. I guess these birds tend to be. Basically, um, I'm using an exacto knife. I'm not going down, I'm kind of going this way, kind of a scrape motion with the blade. And it's really helping to get that, that meat off. You know, the red stuff. Uh, that red stuff, a lot of times it wants to, uh, when it hits that wire wheel, it grabs, grabs the meat and the skin with it and do some damage out of it. 
so I try to go ahead and get it off as much as possible. And it's all part of the fleshing process. Just trying to get that stuff off. Right here around the tail. Yeah, mainly the red meat's what I'm trying to get off. But if I see a chunk of fat, I may go ahead and take a dive in it. That's kind of what's going on. Here's red meat right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get all this off too. I need a while I'm in while it's here. This stuff's coming up pretty easy. And where the bone separates from the body. The little remnants of muscle or whatever. Being attached, it comes off pretty easy. Have just a little bit more control over what's going on. So that being said, do the best you can do, and I'll be getting this off, and I'll get back with you. And I get squared away. Basically, just raking that fat off. And I'm raking motion, not a cutting motion. I'm not exactly not. But it's getting me right down to the bare skin. So. Separating fat from meat a little bit around the tail as I can. Okay, so See those little, uh, these little nodules here? That's what the bird prunes uh, puts oil on his feathers with. Keep them waterproof, I guess. The glands. If you ever seen a bird reach around his back and, and, and 
they get something that's what he's doing, he's getting oil on his feet and then he uh, spreads it through his feathers. It's kind of weird. But here's what it looks like. This is a gland with oil in it. And here it is. Did a number on it, I'm sure. Yeah. But you got one on each side there. I got you can see it, like a little ball there. That's what it is. You definitely want to get all that oil out in the lands on the shore. Yeah, you You got different rows of feathers too, so you get different rows of quills. That you gotta deal with. This is any bird. It's not particular to one bird or another. I got one main feather. Um, Quill, I guess you could say it's the spinal cord where it comes off. But it's right here. I'll bend it, twist it. And I've got like a layer of meat on top of these quills. I can go ahead and scrape that off. And I get the heavy stuff with my exacto knife finer stuff, you know, with a brush, you know, like, on the wheels and all that stuff. Now I'll get up under the skin a little bit, you know, because I know there's different layers, those quills, but can you go in between each quill with your exacto my blade like that? Separate those bad boys. That's the start of getting that stuff out. Because your wire brush can go in between those quills a little bit.
what you want to come. Now we want to be careful if you need to really tear stuff down the tree, around the tail. Kind of become a little bit fragile anyway. Some of this stuff off. Okay, I've got me some uh, cold gauge out wire. What I'm going to do, see those little holes that tells you where to put your necking material. There's, there are, you know, your wires. There's holes already for your wires. And so I see a little hole right there. Um, it's kind of hard to make out, but. I've never used this particular bird body. It's got a lot of sharp angles, I guess you could say. But what I'm doing is I'm pre, kind of like pre drilling my holes so I don't have to wrestle with it later. I've got a bigger gauge wire, in this case, 12 gauge. Um, oh, and also, remember my four and a half inch measurement? I remember um, my four and a half inch measurement was from the end of the breast. For the neck, the four and a half inch measurement was, or the four and a quarter inch measurement was from the end of the breast. So you can assume that if it calls for five and a half, then they're talking about, yeah, that's a whole inch, an inch and a quarter deep. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a, it's definitely an inch. A little over an inch I'm thinking but definitely an inch for the uh, ring neck uh, for the ring neck male has strawberry eyes okay if you look you've got uh, four and three-fourths and that's for the neck length and five-eighths so four and three fourths, that sounds good. That's what we're going to go with. He's going to be flying, but well, what I want to do, 
since I know he's flying and I know these bird bodies are hard, a lot of times I'll go ahead and you know preset them. You know, go ahead and make a hole now. Is what I'm looking at. Even for my turkeys, I use a long drill bit. You know, and you know a thin one. And it's going to be long. The reason I do that, so I'm angling up. That way, I don't have to worry about you know the wire coming through like on the back. You know, that would be inconvenient. You know what I mean? So. Okay, now I've got some wing wires. Wow, those wing wires. Hmm. It's got to be right in here, I guess. That's all I can assume. It's got a big old pocket there. Huh. Uh, honestly don't know. I guess on the real body would be about right here. I'll have to do a little research on that. Yeah, every everybody's got their own little style, and sometimes it messes up other people's techniques. You know what I mean? And you got to figure stuff out. Okay, I've got my 14 gauge wire, and I definitely want to make sure that it's long enough to go through the body, go through the neck. So I'm going to need room for anchor. It's better to have it too long than not long enough because you can always snip off excess. But you got to go through the top of the head. And the last thing you're going to do is cut that wire off at the top of the head. And so you want to, you just definitely want to make sure you have enough as opposed to not enough. Because it's nothing more infuriating than having that wire stick out. Maybe three quarters, you know, maybe, or three eighths or something like that, or a quarter inch from the top of the head. Yeah, that ain't cool. You, and you ain't gonna like it. So, make sure you keep that in mind that you want it more than long enough. So what I like to do is put an edge, so I'll kind of like get a corner grab here and then. I'm going to put it at an angle. Oops. That's good enough of a bite right there. Plus, we already pre-drilled our holes, you know, with 12-gauge wire. So, so that'll be fine for just sticking right through there. And then, going like this. Definitely, uh, definitely enough wire. That's pretty good like that. And then, yeah, you can see that. You just uh, tap it in with a hammer. That ain't coming back out. Okay, now I'll bend it straight. Well, I got... some neck to do some 5 8 neck so that's gonna be fun because I have no 5 8 naked material but I'll show you how we remedy that well I know we're wanting four and three-fourths naked material so I'll go right here to where my thumb is grab my scissors there we are I know there's holes in here. I hate that because I know what happens when that wire wheel grabs feathers out of those holes. But these places where there isn't no holes, if you got a little shield here that catches most of that meat, it's a little bit of a lifesaver there. I'm just going to take my time because I'm not in a hurry. I'm not supposed to be, let's put it that way. See some feather quills there, and the wire wheels are running this way. 
So it helps to pay attention to which way the wire wheel runs and which way you're holding your bird. Because you want it to, if it catches those feathers the other way, it'll, it'll, it'll bust them up, is what it'll do. So just keep that in mind. goal is not to put a hole with this thing because you can there's some people that don't do their wood ducks with a flesh machine because the wood ducks are so fragile to them to each his own at least getting that covering off the fat where it's greasy um, it's got to help a little a lot of holes on this guy. A lot of times when the feathers get black on the end, it's like they're fixing to fall out or something. So just be careful. I mount a lot of dope with black, like tips that are rotten or something on the ends. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's molting. Could be an issue with molting. I have no idea. But the main thing is just take your time. Don't let those feathers catch. That's what you're really worried about. You don't want those feathers to catch. Use your finger as a guide. When you feel it rubbing up against your finger, the, the brush, you're, you're about good enough. They definitely got different wire wheels for your turkeys. I have had, they sent me one and I couldn't get it to fit. So I don't know if they just, just kind of guessed, thinking it will fit or what, but it didn't fit. Um, but that's why you can take stuff back that don't work, you know, send it back, you know. But I never did. I just use a wire wheel and a vise on my drill. What I use for my turkeys. Works good. If you do it right, you can have really good results. But you gotta be willing to do it right, take your time. You gotta really be paying attention to what you're doing. Where that wire wheel is going, what it's doing, you know. Let's see, we got some of the, here's some of the tail here. Right up here by the anus. It's a very tedious process, but it's got to be done. Or grease will leak out of your bird. That's crazy. If you do a lot of damage, you're going to have to remember you got like damage around in places and you can't just uh, run your wire wheel. Basically is what, it's, what it means. here along the back. This wheel is tailor made for form shit. 
Pardon me. That's going all shallow. These guys are so thin. Around my legs. Got a lot of fat on him, so yeah, this wire wheel is a must. These birds got so much fat on them like this. My goodness. I do where you see it, but so all that's a little bit of fat right there. They're on the skin right there. Gotta come off. Well, you get the idea. The hardest part is along the edges here where you gotta sew and all that stuff. So, you definitely wanna be careful there. idea that tail looks pretty good already but I'll hit that a little bit more get some of that fat off and uh, but you get the idea there's some fatty spots right here gotta come off Take much pressure, just basically I'm just touching it, letting the wire wheel whip around. And you know, if you ever been kind of like uh, skint by wire wheel, you know it's easily done. So that's the process. It's taking the fat off. It's just letting it skin up again. Let that fat skin up against that wire wheel. Let it take that stuff off. That's one there. Okay. On the back, you don't want to get too carried away because the skin is so thin. You don't want it to whip around, just take that fat off. The skin's right up underneath it, too.
Well, I'll keep working on that. I think you get the idea. Um, a lot of fat right up here around that neck, though. Goodness gracious. My goodness. Put all that fat up in here. I never should have re-inverted the head yet. You know, when I skinned him out, because uh, he was inverted, and I did. I forget and do it a lot. This makes my life a lot easier. I don't forget. But I do tend to forget. This is a breast area where it meets the neck. Uh, typically always really bad spot. That liquefies that fat. It's just breaking the covering over it, off of it, exposing it. Believe it or not, it is getting it off because it's sprinkling everything with it. So yeah, it's coming off. I'm just taking my time, eating up a lot of video, but you get the idea. Well, it is possible to get up to the corners. Uh, you just have to hold it and be real careful with it. Use your finger as a barrier. You can still you know, you can get all that right up. Oh, well, bad example. But if you're real careful with it, maybe at an angle a little bit or something. You can get right up against the right up against the edge. You sure can. That's kind of tricky though. Kind of tricky. Hit it from an angle. that right there. Whoa. Try to make sure I go the direction that the wheel wants me to go, which seems to help. You know, you're less apt to do damage that way, I guess is the right word. feel safer you can always wire 
wire brush the, the edges, you know, where it's, where the incision is, you know. You can get pretty darn close. Not even close enough, you know. Just gotta be real careful and patient with it when it does thing. That's for sure. the idea you can get right to the edge but you have to be super careful with it okay I've got a little bit of dish soap putting it in with uh, I'm gonna fill that up with water this McKinsey relaxer degreaser this stuff really works and you'll see it'll take all the blood out and what I do Without having to show you, I'll grab the bird right around their breast area, usually is where I grab it. Or I get my hand up in there, depending on how big the bird is. And I go down and just kind of douse. You know, you don't want to sit there and scrub feathers. You know, sometimes I'll kind of pat them a little bit. You know, let moisture, or, you know, get in and out. Suds it up real good. And it'll clean him and he'll be spotless and he'll be degreased and everything. And the directions on the degreaser says uh you know to use uh for washing and general cleaning one to two ounces to five gallons of water to use as a degreaser in a pickle add two ounces to every five gallons of the pickle solution so it's some good stuff they use it in pickles and everything else let's see i'm gonna go about one and a half somewhere in that range maybe two that's plenty right there and, of course, when I mix it with the water, it'll do what it's got to do. I suds it up real good. Then I douse my bird in it. And then I'll rinse him. And he'll, he'll be spotless. And for the rinsing process, I'm just going to use the sink. And when I rinse him, I'll do the same thing. Just kind of keep dousing him and everything. And, uh... You'll see, he'll be spotless. Well, I forgot to cut the back of the school off, but I'll show you that too. Uh, it happens. You know, you forget your steps a little bit. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and rinse him. Uh, I think we got most of the grease out. Um, so... I'm going to go ahead and let him dry, dry here for a minute, and then we're going to rinse him. And it's the same thing as washing him, except I'm just going to use clear water. Here's our bird again. And now what I want to do is start throwing the borax to him as fast as possible. You know, while he's still good and wet... Probably got enough here to do him. There we are. Sometimes that skin don't want to go all the way through on these wings. I don't want to get borax on the on his body, I'm sure. Try to keep it in him. Mm. Try to keep it minimal, but uh, I never can. Got 
at least I can uh, get him real good. These wing joints and everything. Make sure I get it down there in those joints real good. Down in there. So far it's not really slipping any feathers, which is always a good sign. Of course it's not mounted yet, but usually I don't worry about that. If I know I'm kind of timely on them, then you know it's not really your fault. I guess that's a good way to say it. All this is going to be cut off anyway. You know, the joint, the ball joint area. Okay, plenty of borax there. Wings inverted. I'll go ahead and do the other one real quick. While oh, he's getting wet. You get on that skin while it's good and wet. That's what you want to do. Uh, yeah, I've already messed up and got it on his uh, feathers, and that happens. It's hard not to do it, so. Oh. These ball joints on the end, I'm going to get, I'm going to cut it right there where it attaches to the body. That's the way I do it. Or I guess that's the way everybody does it. So, I got plenty of borax on there. It's saturated. Now, go ahead and invert that wing. I'll grab that last primary. And let everything bend. Like it wants to bend, I guess is the right word. Here we are. Look, okay, everything is out. A little bit of a hole there, bore it to come out. Okay. Legs. Legs get real good. These, these little ball joints up at the top, I cut those off too. Um. Their bones, for the most part, are hollow. You know, it helps them in flying, I guess. Yeah, all that borax down in here real good. You'd be surprised how good that degreaser works. Oh my God, it works so good. Cleans them up, gets all the blood off of them. It's, a, it's amazing. I did a hog with that stuff. You know, just put it in the wash. With dish soap and it come out dry as a bone that hog did. We'll be happy to be here after I'm long and dead and gone. It I don't know what that stuff does, but it does something to the, the grease or the fat. It uh you can even feel it. It 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 get it takes it off. So I'm I'm tickled to death about that stuff. That stuff literally Eats the uh, fat off. That's my best guess about it. Okay, that leg goes in. Just pull it through. Go ahead and do this one. This leg is ready to be re inverted. There's also the tail here. Get that real good. I meant to cut the back of the skull, but wouldn't think that's much going on. But 
It's not going to hurt anything. Get plenty of borax in there. Plenty of borax in there. A lot of times I'll let them sit overnight. Let that, you know, kind of like you would a fish, sort of. Let it just kind of soak. That way you know the borax is doing its thing. And uh, I've been known to do that quite a few times, actually. And he's got it everywhere else. I've got a trick for, well, let me invert the head and get the head real good. Preserve good there. Got around my eyes pretty good. Make sure I'm getting everything real good before I, you know, invert the skin here because I've got some other things I've got to do. He's completely preserved. I'll cut the back of the school here in just a second, but I'll go ahead and you know, I'll hang his head over and let the borax drop through. And I'll make sure I get that neck real good. Um you know it's a it's a problem spot if you're not careful, you know, to not get it super good so I'll uh, put like a bucket underneath or something to you know catch the excess but in the meantime okay Sometimes I'll fill it up and waterlog it real good and leave it that way overnight. I've done that. But we know it's real good and damp in there. So we, we kind of like the idea. My sharpening steel is perfect for this. Um, You can see I let that borax go all the way through. I can put a lot on this side. I mean, why not?
Best time to get the neck is when you skin him out and, you know, uh, the neck is completely reversed when you get him off the skin and gambro. That's your good time to go ahead and do the neck. You can also grab some water. Water log him real good, you know. Like I'm sure he already was waterlogged pretty much. So, yeah, see how that's coming through? That's what you want. You know, it's real good waterlogged. You know, that preservative has done its thing. I ordered the wrong eyes. No, I didn't order the wrong eyes. I didn't get eyes. I thought they were yellow. I didn't look close enough. Ringneck ducks have stole yellow. Is wrong. It seems like I've seen some mounted that had the yellow eyes. So what I'm going to do is I've done it before. I'll freeze him, order the eyes. When the eyes come in, I'll mount him right up. I forgot to show you the back of the head. Yeah, I need to. I should have already done that, but I didn't. So right now is as good a time as any. It needs to be done. Well, if you notice on the back of the head, there's a lower jaw right here. Well, I want to cut just enough of the back of the head where I can stick a wire in at a 45 degree angle and go right through the top of the head. I'll show you that. I'll take off about that much. I don't want to get the lower jaw, so I want to... A lot of times I'll cut a little bit at an angle. It's not going to hurt nothing. I don't want to destroy nothing. I want to get to that. Here we are. Back of the school. You toss that in the garbage. Then you get you a wire. Get you a wire. Get your trash can. Let it hang over. Which... You can see it. You can see it. Good. Get those brains out. Borax will help you too. If you got to use borax, it will help. See how it's coming out? Got it. Spoilage if you don't. Well, it wouldn't mount it. It wouldn't. wouldn't got to do it. Hey, you stick the wire through the top of the head. I mean, it's not like you can avoid it. That's what I'm getting at. Goes all the way up the top of the head. Right in there where the base of the neck is. Base of the skull. And you can also use more of the borax to kind of clean it out real good. You know, the borax grabs everything, takes the moisture out of it. I guess that's the principle on how it works. But okay, right here in this corner, there was a little bit I didn't get right here. See, that borax helps. So all that's coming out. Looks like there's a place where I, I wouldn't say tendons. Yeah. I have to kind of pull it. Those in the top of the skull right there. Yeah. It's hard to get out there. I mean, a wire is good for a lot of it, but some of it, it doesn't help to have the help of a little grasping, you know, hemostats, for sure. As you can see, it's good and hollow now. But that being said, I'm going to throw a bunch of borax in there. There we are. 
I usually use a Dremel tool, but it's not a necessity. Um, I was taught not to use a Dremel tool. I was taught to use this. Just a wire with a point on the end. And you'll see a lot of my videos. I do have... Um, Got to go in at an angle. Right through there. Well, this is in the way. Well, that'll remedy that. Go at an angle. You can see it's coming through. A Dremel tool is cleaner I like, and more efficient. You don't have to worry about stuff cracking that's not supposed to crack. And it seems like the Dremel tool even possibly widens the hole out a little bit better. So that's why I tend to use a Dremel tool. But I wasn't taught to. I was taught to just use a wire. You know, keep things simple. So... I may widen it just a little bit, just I think I did widen the hole out a little bit. That was my purpose. See how easy it is? And it's about a 45 degree angle, or in this case, not even 45. But he's going to be fine. That neck's going to be out. So that's going to look pretty good. Well, I've got to order some eyes. And I'm going to put this guy, and I'm going to invert him with the borax is on the inside as much as humanly possible and then I'm going to put him in a bag put him in the freezer while I order those eyes because I totally totally forgot totally forgot but he'll be alright I mean I've ordered birds and it had a lot more you know better. A lot worse shape than this guy will be. <clears throat> they will get hard. Um, the borax, it's not good, but when it comes down to it, you, uh, it's not going to be that bad because we're talking about a week or something like that, and then the eyes will be in, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Wait for the eyes. Make sure this guy's in a good position where nothing's going to ruin. I'm just going to put him in the freezer. He'll be fine for a week. Give him time to preserve real good. At least we know he's not going to ever go bad. Well, when I hit, went ahead and ordered my eyes, I went ahead and ordered some of my necking material that I needed, the 5 8 So, uh, basically, well, you see, I still got them pretty close to the same, same diameter for the most part. Um, but I'm going to uh, just use my real necking material because it's smoother. Not saying this won't work, but I'll just take that off and put this on try to get it straight as possible easier said than done of course it always is whoops through the middle is what you want or as close to the middle as you can get it that my friends is close okay and then you can you know if you went in and crooked a couple of times bend the wire accordingly you know to make sure the neck is straight you know no biggie here again I'll grab my super glue just for a good hold put some right down here on the end just so it holds good you know Then I cinch it down. Yeah, it's not going nowhere. 
Just straighten that up. Oops, a little bit to one side, but we can fix that. We're good to go. Use my blow dryer. Uh, don't have a tumbler. Um, a lot of people don't. No biggie. Yeah, it's not like you have to have one. But basically what I do is uh, I blow it. Uh, every blow dryer is different. I, I give it short bursts of warm air, like maybe up to three seconds max, depending on the temperature and my blow dryer and everything else. I'll start on the body first. And it's going to be a while, but it'll come out looking really, really good. Um, but I'm going to get started. And when I get on a wing or something, I'll let you know. Right now, I'm just, I usually get started around the belly and get it fluffed up kind of. Then I work towards the tail, then the back, and then the wings. and Kind of like a process. I'm on no more than three seconds of warm, and then it's... Just, what happens if it gets too hot, your feathers will curl on the end. When it dries, uh, they won't be flat. They'll have curls on the end. It's better to have a slightly damp feather, like blow dry, but not where it's completely bone dry, you know, but pretty dry where the feathers are starting to fluff up. And you're usually pretty good about right there. Um, but at any rate, um, a lot of this can come off. Um, you know, what have you like that. But one, two, three. One, two, three. No more than three seconds, you know, of warm air. Uh, you know, I'll let off the button, in other words. No more than three seconds. And then I push in on the button, I have cool air. So, I'll do this. It's taking a long time. Some people just use cool air, and that's good. But I've learned I don't have to just use cool air. I can, uh, one, two, three. Seems like it helps it dry faster. One, two, three. And then you can use a paper towel and get excess borax off. One, two, three. Yeah, you definitely don't want to send the feathers. Cur curly edges on feathers does not look good. One, two, three. I like to go up from underneath and let the warmer get up underneath the feather, but a lot of times I go straight down on the feather just to add a little extra body. Um, it's more pronounced like on wing feathers. Um, I'll go up underneath to dry them, kind of, and then to add body, I'll blow them from the top like on a table. It seems like it helps them just fluff out. So, uh, but you'll develop a technique. Unless you're using a tumbler, in which case, uh, you're good to go for a lot of commercial grade taxidermy. And that's good too. But I'll get back with you and make progress because I could be doing this for hours. A few hours, you know. Yeah, if you get like borax on the uh, feathers, it'll come right off. Um... I try to keep the table kind of borax free that helps but it's going to come off the skin you know where you preserved it in borax yeah I do this to a lot of birds um, um, like where the feathers are a little bit stuck to the skin uh, so I don't sit there and just over blow dry it or anything I'll uh Although technically they should eventually pop up, but I help them out. 
you know, just the little downy feathers where they're wet and sticking to the, uh, to the skin. I just help them out a little bit. I don't get carried away with it. Just kind of break them loose, at least the top parts. See how they're breaking loose and popping off the skin a little bit? Uh, that just helps out in the blow drying process. You know what I mean? Just breaking them loose, just helping out a little bit. Not trying to get too carried away with it. Just uh, breaking them loose. Just to help out a little bit, it's extremely wet though, so you probably don't have to do this. Uh, you probably don't even have to really do it, but I like to help the feathers out, break them loose a little bit off that skin. Uh, maybe borax may be helping it a little bit to stay on there. Borax gets everywhere. It's on the end of the feathers. A lot of times I like to pull it off. You know, don't want anything to impede the, uh, you know, the feather fluffing out, you know. You know how they'll swell out when they dry. Don't want anything, borax or something kind of keeping it tight, you know, not coming out. But borax is everywhere. But she's kind of working at it. She's already coming up a little bit. Yeah, it seems like for right now my blow dryer is working better with like a, a one two and then uh pushing a button in so it gets cool again so that's how i've been doing it keeping it warm but not hot so i don't uh puzzle the feathers on the end what happens is the very end of the feathers they get a lot of wrinkles that's how you know you kind of singe the feather a little bit so just keep that in mind uh it's very easily done no doubt about it but let me get the heat to this and see how we can get these wings looking. One, two. working on that I usually do the bottom and then the top and I'm gonna fluff the feathers out without burning them and uh, yeah that's basically how I do it and make sure all these little feathers are not stuck to the skin they're starting to dry already as you can tell but I'll keep working on that and a lot of times I'll hold the bird you know like maybe by his last primary or something to kind of help out and If you send your breast feather or something, that's all right. You'll never even notice it. But the wing feathers, yeah, you want to just, uh, you want them to fluff out with as least amount of damage as possible from, you know, blow dryer heat or anything like that. Yeah, I may help it out a little bit here. Uh, you know, just break some of the feathers loose. Some of them are already breaking loose. It's just where they're stuck down. But I know borax has a sticking property, so, uh, Try to help the feathers out a little bit just from the start, you know, to help out just a little bit.
I'll get back to when I get done. Sometimes I use a the end of a toothbrush or something, just for a little little bit of help with uh, you know bringing the neck up where I can uh, blow dry it, you know. Pretty much a neck is all we got left right here. Um, Try to get up front underneath a little bit, see how far I can get up in there. Okay. Just a little bit more. Well, that's good enough for me. Now we'll start mounting. You can see he's pretty well dry. Maybe a little bit damp in areas, but okay. There's a couple little holes there. Uh, I'm not going to get super good with it, but I will close up. There's a couple of holes there I need to close up. Uh, them little BB holes, I'm not worried about those really. So I'll go ahead and sew those up. What I do is I get my button thread and get enough for a couple of holes. Just like I sew any bird up. And I'll go through. I just tie a knot or two in the end. That's all I do. There we are. That's two knots. And uh, snip off the excess. So many feathers, you'll never see. And I sew from the inside. I don't sew where it'll show on the outside. Make sure nothing's poking through, no good feathers or anything. Uh, you don't want to lose feathers, I mean, because you're sewing. Uh, you don't want to cover them up. To start on one end, preferably the furthest end. Get right on the end of that skin, you know, so it don't show. I guess it should have went in from the other side. But I think you get it. I think you can see it. Try not to catch any feathers, you know, by all means.
pull that through. I just go right through that that loop I made, cinch it down, make sure those feathers do not come through. They have a tendency to want to come through, but. trying to get right on the edge of these feathers that's very minimal anyway but keep wanting to pop through Oof. like with any game animal you just uh, make sure those feathers are on the outside so forth <clears throat> it doesn't have to be super strong I mean it is a bird skin it after all but I get right on the very edge that's where I put my I guess you go that way or that way or you can loop around um, But the main thing is uh, the skin. I mesh the skin up with the feathers on the outside to show minim minimally as much as possible. And, and a lot of times if they're those super small holes, I don't worry about it per se. Okay, just uh, yeah, I knew when I skinned it out, I had some holes there I had to deal with. Um, you can go back through here and kind of lock it. I draw those down. Now here's the way I do it. I mean, I'm not super good with knots, but okay. Um, see where I went through my last double loop? See, I, I got the thread doubled anyway. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go back through and grab one of those threads, just one of them. Pull it through. Then I go ahead and finish cinching my knot up. If you know what I mean. See, like that. And put another knot. And I'm done. Guess you can put another knot if you wanted to, but I don't think. Probably depends on where it's at or whatever, but there you go. That's how I do them. I got another one to do right there, but some of these small ones that are like BB holes, that's a BB hole. That's a BB hole, and that's a BB hole. They're so small, it's it's not going to make a difference. So so I don't mess with them, unless you want to or something. But I usually don't even mess with the real super small BB holes. Okay, this guy he's going to be uh, he's going to be flying, um, but we always take these joints off the very end. Um, Something like a big turkey or something. I get right up under this joint and bend like that. See how that kind of came? And then I'll do the other side the same way. Get right here on the very end. Like this is really especially important if you're doing turkeys. Get right here on the end of that joint. Let's see. Like right here. Right there on the end of that joint. Bend. So I pop that stuff up. It just came right up.
I don't, these birds are, tend to be somewhat hollow, but there may be something, like some marrow or something in there. Like a little bit of marrow or something in them. Uh, so I would, uh, like I do any bird, like a turkey or something, it's got some real small gauge wire, uh, and this might be 18 or something. And, see, it's got, it's got a little bit in it too, see. Probably doesn't hurt to go ahead and get that out. The other one's the same way. Just kind of get a little trash bucket down there. Look at that. See, it's it's got it in it. So uh, I go ahead and get it out. The wings are definitely hollow, though. That's for sure. On any bird, really. So, it's just the legs. Got a little bit of marrow. I would go ahead and take the time to go ahead and get that out. Maybe put a little bit of borax or something down in there. You know, uh, maybe tuck some borax down in there to ensure. And it may help even get more out. You know, like we use it. You can leave it in there, it don't hurt nothing. If anything, it's gonna help preserve it a little bit better, so. Well, keep that in mind. Put a little borax in there. But they don't have near as much as like, uh, you know, like a turkey or something. Game birds. Oh, here again, I get right at the corner. And usually you can kind of do like that. I got below the wing joint for the most part. There we are. Just make sure both wings are definitely the same length, of course. So we'll do it on this side too. Uh, okay, we'll go right here, right here on the corner. A lot easier on a turkey, but. You get the idea. The length is the same. We're good. Maybe a hair bit off right here. Just a hair bit. It might not be a bad idea if you had like a bandsaw or something. Just zzz, and go right through it. You know, that would be very easy. Now these are supposed to be hollow. They got water. That's it. Um, you might want to get that water out. Just waterlogged. Just waterlogged. A little borax in there too. That's just water. But a little something else is going on in there too, looks like, so. Jab a little bit of borax down in there. Never hurts. Put a little borax down in there. And 
Alrighty. That's hollow anyway. For the most part, it was hollow. Well, let's start stringing him up. I usually start with the hardest ones first, which are the wings, and then the legs are the easiest. Clean him up first, get some of his borax off of him. Down deep in his eye sockets and everywhere else. Most of the clay will adhere a lot better. Oh, there's a bunch of borax right there. Needs a brush on him too a little bit. Get all that stuff off of him. Got some stuff down in the back of the school that's got to come out. Borax. In other words, pour borax all over this guy. Borax off of there. Got critter clay, which is kind of soft, and that's good. That's what you want. Now I don't know if there's any specific order that's best, but we can go ahead and put some in the eyes for now. Less than that, probably about like this. Basically, what I want, like from the top, I want a contour that's looks like it just kind of comes off the front of the school to the back of the school, and then a little bit of area there that's beefed up a little bit where the eye socket is. That's just the way I do it, and I've had good luck. I mean, people like my ducks and stuff, so I'm not going to deviate too much from that. There. Okay. I don't want the point of the the front of that school didn't really stick out much. I kind of okay. So I covered the the eye socket. See how it looks? Just it's not really bulging out. It is a little bit, but not the eye socket itself. Okay. So it's just kind of flush with the school. That's how I like to do it. And then I just pop my eyeball on top. And then the same as the other side here. I go ahead and get a little water. a bit more in there or like that yeah and then I, so I look from the top and try to smoothen it out I want to make sure I put enough where the point in the front doesn't like stick out and grab the skin that's uh, that means I need to put more I saw good stuff in there as far as I'm concerned. That's the way I look at it. I want it just smooth. That way I can just pop that eye in. The skin will go over it without hooking onto anything. And that works for me. That's just the eye socket from the top. You know, it's pretty well 
even is what I'm working for anyway. And as far as my hole, see, I'm kind of like in between both eyes. That's where I like to put the hole, uh, you know, for my net wire. Um, if it's back here, to me, it's a little bit too far back. That's just the way I roll. That is the way I roll. So we got here, we got a little bit of air you can contend with. Uh, just jab it in there. That's like where I took all the jaw meat out and stuff. You know, it's, good. it's a hollow area. I'll put some in there. Use this to kind of smooth that down in there real good. Of course, you can use like a little bit of a modeling tool or something, I guess, to get it in there. this lower this back part to hook on anything so I'll put a little clay back there even right in here looks like I'd use a little bit anyway Maybe not that much, but okay, here we are. It's about good enough. So like right down here, there's even a little bit of a place where there was some meat. I'll put a little clay in there, right through there even. Anything where the skin's going to drop in because I took muscle out, I get rid of that. Um, with it being smooth like this, that skin's just going to drape right over it. And of course, my eyeball's going to go right there. And you do the other side the same way. I'll go ahead and do that. And we'll, I made like a triangle out of my clay. And got it about the right width. And what it does is it goes up into there. You know where you uh, pull the tongue out and all that and then got all this skin uh, fleshed out and everything basically uh, use the help of a little bit of water maybe and start smoothing it in there it's, it's in there real good um, See how it's going in there real good. And okay. Here at the back, it's pretty good. 
all the way back to the lower jaw where it starts to curve up. And I got a little extra clay here if I need it. Right here in the back. Now we can go ahead and drape the skin back over this guy. Kinda, it'll help kind of keep everything in place. Good clean hand helps. There we are. Voila. Skin goes around on that side. Skin goes around on this side. I like to go ahead and sew that head up because everything is intact already. That's just me. Um, plus you got the neck wire in there and it's going to cause trouble. So I'll go ahead and try to sew him up right now. Plus it centers everything. We'll put the eyes in later. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention about those eyes while we're on the topic. It does a little bit, looks a little bit off from yellow, but I could almost bet you could use yellow and nobody would really even care much. I mean, to me, that's a, there's a, it is like a little bit of an off yellow. They call it straw. Yellow, for the most part, they're yellow. Uh, it's a little bit off. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but it's a, it's not quite as bright as yellow. I'm going to go ahead and sew him up. I want to make sure I get enough to uh, you know, do that neck incision. I'll go ahead and do it now because I know I'm not going to have any trouble, you know, getting it to fit. Or I usually don't, so I don't worry about it. And I've got this. But I will say, I do it every, pretty much about, I do it often. See how that net wires, uh, could be a little bit farther. Um, I think I'm good to go. But, in other words, I cut my wire too short again. I do it a lot. Um, it's just a bad habit. But I think I'm good enough. Um, typically, you want this much hanging out of the top when you're done. That way, you can snip it off. You comfortably have enough neck wire to go through the top of the head and all that. I have a bad habit of cutting my wire almost too short. And I, I do it every time, but I think I'm good. Um, I'll give it a shot. If I need to, I'll cut a longer wire and do it over again. But, okay, I double my thread. And just like before, I just put a couple of knots in the end of it. You know, some people will twist around, wrap, and then go through and I guess you could do that. I don't know. It's no biggie either way. But we'll get right here on the end and put a couple of knots. Showed you this already, but there you go. And put another knot on top. Just snip the excess off. Okay. Sometimes you can sew from the side or sew from the front, but I tend to go from the front to the back. And a lot of times people will, uh, you know, you know, use your, their spray bottle to kind of get those feathers out of the way. And, okay, that's enough for that. 
you do it on uh, put a little on a Q-tip might even be better, a little bit of water on a Q-tip or something, but it'll blow dry. In other words, again, it will be re-blow dry. In other words, okay, right here on the end, I'll go through. Try to get as close to the end of the skin as possible. That way, you don't you booger the least amount of threads that you can. But you want to make sure it's a good bite. I'll go through like that. And I'll come up over and go up underneath like I would have. Uh, to camouflage the uh, the knot, in other words, make sure those feathers are out of the way. Okay, that's out of the way. And I come down from the top on this side as far to the corner as I can get. Okay, just make sure I got a good bite. Okay. I still got my loop from my other one, so I'll go through it. Cinch it together. Oops, it didn't work. Well, still hooked on this one side, so I will go right here, right here on the very edge if I can. Yes. It's not a durable knot, but it doesn't have to be. It's just got to serve the purpose. Okay, that's good enough anyway. And then, make sure these little pin feathers are out of the way. You need every one that you can uh, possibly keep. You know, you want to use, keep every one to go to the very next one. Right here on the edge. Look at that. Just like that. You want to you wanna baby this stuff because it's not very stout. But it's stout enough. Moving pin feathers out of the way. Stitching it together. Oh, ho. These birds are little too. So that makes it extra important to try to keep those pin feathers out of there. Right here on the edge. Another one. Even the fact that I've got it double feathered or double tied means I'm getting some of those pin feathers in there. So, just uh, one of those things. I try to keep them out of the way. Draw it up. And it don't have to be super tight. You just want to cinch it together. You know, you don't want to over torque or anything. Definitely don't want to do that. Get our next feather. As far as distance apart, uh, less than a, definitely less than a quarter, probably about an eighth, about an eighth of an inch apart. You know, at least on the, uh, on the head here with all the uh, pin feathers and everything. But you don't want to uh, be pulled into your sewing hole, you know. Okay. As 
stitch it together. Don't have to be super tight, just enough to draw it together. There we are. I'll keep doing that until we get it sewed up. My last uh, hole for my for sewing. I'm at the last one. So what I'll do, I like to draw it down pretty close so I don't have to worry about you know, things overlapping and all kinds of weird stuff happening. And you get down pretty close. Kind of helps keep pin feathers from getting into it. And what I'll do is, like before, cut it like that. And what it is, I went through my last loop. Remember, it's double threaded, so I just pull one of the threads out. It's strong stuff, anyway. So, and then, get it together, make sure it's the holes together, and I just put a knot. Make sure there's no feathers in the way to kind of help camouflage it. Gonna be such a little knot, they're no, they're nobody's gonna know it anyway. I mean, I can barely see it right now. I can put another one if you want to. Probably don't even have to. No knots are pretty rigid. Now I want to get as close as I can. Probably even use an exacto knife if I wanted to. I don't want to cut none of the pin feathers if I can keep from it. So I get down right at it. Look at that. After it's been blow dried, you're not I already can see it. It's already camouflaged. Okay, so that's all. Still got all the clay in the head and everything. Um you can stick the eyes in now, or you can make it the last thing you do. If you do do the eyes now, which I tend to like to do, I will pin them in place. That way when I'm trying to jar the hole through the skin at the top of the head, I don't have to worry about it shifting stuff. Not that it's a big problem anyway, I don't think. But Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and get my blow dryer. Blow dry all this up real quick. Got that taken care of. I may go ahead and put the eyes in now. Well, here's a pretty good reference as far as eye placement. It is a flying pose, so it's good to look at a flying um, pose picture, you know, for reference. That way you're not putting the eye too far forwards, too far back, or anything. Although, uh, you know, the eyelids themselves, after you sew it up, it's going to be limited on where you can put the eye anyway a little bit. So you're going to be in the ballpark anyway. Uh, this is, you know, installing the eyes, like right now, which I probably will. Um, and, uh, yeah, just good to find a good picture of a flying pose so you know kind of like where his eyes are going to go. Well, I finally found a picture I was kind of happy with, you know. And uh, just turn the head over this sideways. Use an X-Acto knife or a small modeling tool or something to open that eye up a little bit. Go ahead and try to get that eye in there now. Yeah, you can see, I mean, it already kind of looks good. It's hard to mess them up, really, because the eyelid kind of lays right where you need to put it. 
So the uh, our lid. Okay. Now looking at the picture. I think that's pretty much it right there. At least it's so close, nobody will doubt, you know, that it's a pretty good spot. Okay. I think that's in about right. About the same place. Let's go ahead and put the eye in on the other side real quick. In the same area. This kind of gives you an idea of, uh, oh well, the uh, pitch of the eyes, I guess you could say. And like the top of the eye kind of goes in towards the top of the head. And the bottom eye tends to stick out maybe just a hair bit more. So uh, if you can replicate that, you've kind of got your eyes set the way you need them. So I think I've got it about like how it's supposed to be. So I'll grab some of my pins and pin kind of like his eyes in place to sort of hold it. Right here, the couple of pretty good looking just like it is, but I may jab a couple of holes just to make sure he uh, stays the way he's supposed to stay, you know. I'm gonna put one right here in the front. Just a couple of pins, kind of hold it in place. One more down here. Basically what I'm doing is I just want to make sure I keep the shape of the eye. Although I know you can always do this last too. You know what I mean? So make sure there's no That'll hold him. Um, you do the same thing to the other eye. Throw some pins around it just to 
kind of hold it in place for you. There's like a, like all ducks, they got that little place below the eye that you got to kind of tuck down or it's going to show. And this eye is no different. But. Kind of want that round eye. It has kind of a round eye. You kind of, kind of want that. He looks pretty good. I'm I'm tickled with him. Um, I think he'll look. Looks good. I pull them right here in the front. I'm sure, it's a good, a good sharp one. There we are. Up here, right there. Let's see. Right. Nope, that ain't going in. Gee. When we get a longer wire, I uh, just don't want to, you know, mess around with uh, short wires are a pain in the rump, if you know what I mean. I'd rather have a long wire going to the top of the head so I don't have to worry about it slipping off when I'm doing my stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and change the wire, uh, longer wire out to about here, you know. Well, this is a lot more like it right here. Of course, I'll put a handle on the end here. So find its way to the top of the head there. There you go. Plenty long enough. That's good because you don't have to worry about all the headache. Short head is aggravating. Or short wire, knit wire. I know some wing wires do tend to be a, you know, a gauge smaller than uh, like other, like leg wires and neck wires. Uh, we've got 16 right here. Um, that's what it calls for, so that's what we're going to use. Here again, you want them kind of, rather have the wing wires a little bit long than not long enough, you know. So... It may even call for 18, but 16 is all I got, so um, it should be fine for this. So I'm going to assume it's 16, but it could be 18, which if it is 18, it's what I'm supposed to have anyway. But a lot of times I kind of go by, kind of go by feel anyway, if you know what I mean. Um, I have used, uh, most of the time I do, I, a lot of times I don't use the right gauge wires. It's because... You know, you have to make a special order just for like one wire. Uh, that's not cool. But I, I put 
points on the edges and it's definitely a long enough wing wire uh, see it's got to curl around the body and then come out and so I like to have plenty of wire to work it's better to have too much and not enough you know what I mean that's kind of the way I got it it's actually better for snipping wire I think yep needle nose just has a bad spot on it okay more of an angle yeah, about like that put a good sharp angle on that bad boy yeah look at that that'll do good well I get two wing wires leg wires definitely don't have to be long enough but you just want to estimate you want the wire to be long enough to go through the body wrap around and hook back into the body and still extend out past the feet so that's that's what we're looking at so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all my wires my wing wires and my leg wires wing wires you want to point on both sides because you got to go through the wing and then go back into the body on the leg wires you just need a point on one side if that saves you on you know snipping wire a little bit well I'm going to do one wing and one leg for you and uh this is yeah this is thin wire definitely thin enough for the wings so I'm in the camera definitely Okay, let me find my wing bone. I tend to do the wings first because they're a little bit harder. Now, now there's a strong bend right there. Well, to make my pushing easier, to push my wire through my wings, I'll break that down. I'll cut a little bit through it. I'll break it down a little bit. A lot of times I do break it down. That way you know the maximum amount is still holding. I'm gonna get a little borax and shoot down on that joint there. A lot of times that joint contains oils and stuff. And so any extra meat and stuff, I'll go ahead and get it off. But, okay. That's what we need right there. And uh, so I'll go ahead and I'll un unravel the wing a little bit, you know, all the way. Well, actually, all the way, I guess you could say. Okay. Really, all you got to worry about is this last part right here, right here on the end. I'll go in, and when you pull it through, you can kind of tell go as far as I can through and I want to stay up under those feathers for sure so far so good I like to get as far as I can go a lot of times I'll bend it right here in half it gives me a little leverage then just bend the wire back you know you can do that I think I'm still going for the skin actually, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and bend it right here. Okay, I came through right there good enough. The pose that he selected that he wants me to use for reference, you know, to mount it like, the wings aren't fully extended anyway. But even if they were fully extended, this wire bends. So. Just the way it goes. Now take the wire down. 
you know, where it's not hard to wrap some string around it. I'll go about right there. And, you know, um, like on turkeys and stuff, a lot of times if I wrap, you know, I guess little shoulders or whatever, like right here, little wings, um, I don't worry about on little birds like this, but if I did, you see the wire is far enough down that it's not going to hamper me too much when I'm wrapping like a little body or something for, you know, a little body, a little thigh, not thigh, but you know what it is, wing, whatever you call it, but you know, like that wing muscle. And the drumstick is, you know, the thigh of the leg. And we don't want to make it so hard that we can't uh, wrap it by any means. See how it's good and straight? Well, when I put these wires on there, it's going to stay straight. And then I want to put a little string, too. Now you can just use string and not even worry about wires. This is just me. So that's something to think about too. I may put one more down here at the bottom, right in here. Let's see, this way would be... borax seal in this wing, but that does not bother me in the least. I'll go about right there with it. Put a couple of notches, a couple of twists. Put that in where the bone is so it's not going to extend out. Now I get a little bit of string. On my bucket, put my bucket down beneath me so I can just tumble through it. And I'll start wrapping him up. Don't want to get too carried away, don't want to make it where you can't move the wire, in other words. It's, it's a duck, it ain't got to be super you know, stout or you can't do anything with it. This is some big string too, so it's not gonna take much to get the job done that it's gotta do, so. Mm. Yeah, snip it or cut it, whatever you got on hand. That's fine. <clears throat> you can pull it back through, and now we're going to do a leg. Here on the legs. Then we had to have one sharp 
wire for the leg. Like for a standing bird, we usually, you know, his feet are going to be, probably doesn't hurt to keep his feet kind of damp when you're working because they'll try to dry out on you a little bit. Depending on the condition of your bird when you get him eaten. Also, for leg, you just need a point on one side. Turn that leg upside down. This last knuckle right here. This last knuckle right here. They get right up in there under that last knuckle. And I start digging me a path with my wire. Right up under that middle, whoop, right up under that middle toe. Let me do that again. Okay. Is that middle toe? that middle toe right up we go up under the palm and go right up here to the back of the leg it's kind of a hollow spot back there anyway you know, on, on upland game birds, you gotta like take some of them tendons out, you know? Or it makes your life a lot easier to do that. Let's put it that way. With the big ones, you know, like turkeys, stuff like that. right now I am it's real easy to uh, put a hole through your hand or your finger if you're not careful um, I've done it before not hard to do Try this again. Okay. Yeah, it should be going up into the leg. And it is. I think it calls for 14 gauges, maybe 16. But Fourteen gauge on the leg, fourteen gauge on the head, uh, sixteen or eighteen for the uh, feet. Okay, here again, I'll grab probably about just one. Looks like, and up here towards the top, actually. Okay, up right there. Cinch it down real good. And cinch it down again right there. That's pretty good enough. If you got excess, you want to cut it off. You know, you know, and you can't bend it really too good. Go 
buttons, cinch it off. Okay, but now, just like before, we got our string. And we want to make sure he's not twisted too much. Okay, there we are. And here again, start wrapping some string. Uh, don't want to be too heavy with it. You'll have a hard time pushing it through. And it don't take much. In fact, that's good enough right there. Okay. Now you do the other wing, the other leg, same way. I've got my body, and my goal is to get that wire through the top of that. I remember I put that hole in the top of the skull. That's where this wire is going. It's going through the back of the neck where the neck would be into the skull cavity and up through that uh, hole we made. So a little bit of luck it's going to be easy. Neck is an easy fit. Is that it? Okay, that that's the skull cavity. I can feel the there we are. Right in between the eyes. That's an easy fit. So I'm bringing all that down. That's an easy fit. Check that out. Neck length is correct. It's not coming out. Then we put our wing wires and our leg wires. I don't think I've redone these. What I'm getting at is I don't think I pre-drilled these holes, so it may be a little harder than I want it to be. Maybe. somewhere right in there. Where I should anyway. I'll grab right here, pull back out. Use this to keep the wire in. Okay, there we are. And I should be able to just push it on through. There, oh, there it is. Now just pull on this, what it does, see it draws it up to the body. What I want to do is get enough, get a good bite. Go into the body again. That's plenty. I think it is. That right there. Pull it back now.
it in by going up with it like that. Tenses are good. I pulled out of the picture. I do that a lot. Especially on birds and stuff, it seems like. Okay. Okay, that's got to come back out. too much so we'll come back out with it about right there hmm. it's all too again. It's pretty good. I'm going to go in right there. super pretty as long as it's right you know what I mean um, as long as you got your anchors in your wings aren't going to come out There we are. all the way down real good. Right 
gonna be an easy fit. Big guy. Okay. Again, gotta get that wing where I want to go. So we're gonna help it. Oh, look at that! Now here again, I'm angling up towards the top, so you don't have to worry about trying to bend wires and put them in the back and all that stuff. So. Makes life a lot easier. You know, if you don't have to worry about doing that, so. Turn it this way. the leg is positioned right run right into that there we are we turn it back this way don't take much just want a good anchor nothing more Oh, whoa. Not sure if I got enough to get into that. I do what you do. There's a pre drilled hole right there that we did. right hand that I'm going to turn it again so I can get to it. Make sure the leg's not twisted or anything. That's perfect. Too far. Almost did. That's plenty.
Sometimes I'll put a pin in that neck so it don't keep sliding up all the time. It's just a little pin, you know. Now it's the baseball stitch again. It's an easy fit. I mean, it fits nicely. Easily, so... Sometimes I'll use, now he does want it, he wants a wire coming through it, and then it looks like it's flying out from the piece of wood, so I'm thinking i got to put a wire like right in here, um, what I'll do, I think what I'll do is uh, kind of pre-pin everything. It's a super good fit anyway. Right in there, there's a center right there. I'm trying to do is get just a good idea where I'm going to put that wire and then probably do the anchoring. Before I sew them up is what I'm getting at. So that's kind of what I got going on. He's a good, he's a good fit anyway, so. Yeah, that's essentially the anus right there. Okay, 
tail's going to be spread right here. Okay. Then I got 10 gauge wires. What do you want to use? It's the biggest wire I got. He's a, he's a light duck, so that'll, that'll work out pretty good. Think of what I'll do. I got kind of a point. Not a super good one, but good enough. Um, I think what I'll do is, according to the way he wants it, I may anchor it first, you know, poke my holes through the body on this side, like right here somewhere, and then anchor it first and then go ahead and sew him up. That's my plan. Then I'll have all this excess wire that I can cut, you know, get a piece of driftwood and put on it and all that stuff. So that's kind of what I got going on. So I kind of pinned it so everything stays a little bit proportioned, you know, while I do my my magic or whatever. So I'm thinking right here. Go so somewhere right in here. Yeah, right there. Okay. What I'll do is I'll take these pins out now. Since I know I'm not going to put it in a bind when I try to sew it. It should come out pretty soon. It should come out. Ugh. Yeah, right in here somewhere. Where it's wanting to come out anyway. Oh yeah, there it is. It's always real easy to accidentally. Put a hole, you know. I put a hole in your hand. That's what I mean to say. Now, as far as helping, how much it helps? Yeah, I don't know about that. Good thing it's a 10 gauge, uh, a little bit more, any more would be a little bit hard to deal with, you know, so probably a good thing that it is what it is. I think I'm going right there, and I don't think it's going to hurt anything being right there. All that is is extra... I just put a little clay on there because I put a lot of dents in it. I'm going to get a hammer. That would definitely help. Yeah. Well, I went ahead and kind of tapped it in with a hammer, you know. A little bit of the screwdriver. Use that a little bit. It's in far enough. Now, a lot of times I'll draw a mark so it reminds me of where the center line is. And I can see it. Roughly somewhere around in there. Kind of helps me when I pin things together. Um, I'm going to do it for now just for uh, the best things.
Now, when, see, a lot of times they have pins help. That way I sew it evenly also. You know, take pins out at a time. That's just the way I tend to do it. This tends to help. It's so top heavy, it keeps flopping over. I might have to redo the eyes, but that's all right. Okay, all done in my critter clay. Now I got a big gap here. You know, I strolled a little bit. Some of that clay come off anyway, so. Just pin him up roughly. Yeah, I may need to even use a little polyfill on this guy, for sure. Because he's like got a lot of a lot of room to swell right there. I'm going to use polyfill. I've actually got some, so. You know, whatever I put on one side, I put the same equal amount on the other side. Right in the middle. A little on the sides. Yeah. And put a little on the breast, I think. Maybe very little on the sides. He swelled up, but he'll still sew together. Somewhere in that range. We'll tweak that later. A lot of times it helps you proportion your sewing a little bit too. So that helps. start sewing. One more pants. Here we are. 
Here again, I like to turn him sideways. So I'm gonna grab him, turn him sideways, like so forth. Okay, here I've got my uh, button thread again and my sewing needle. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple knots here in the back. another one there we are cut my excess off Start up here at the top where the breast is. Hmm. May have tore a little or something. Very, very possible. Let's go through that knot I already tied for the two lines. Cinch it down, start doing my baseball stitch. Super easy. Try to get on the corner as much as I can without being too much on the corner that it's gonna tear through. You get pretty good at it. It's like a judgment call a little bit. You make a knot, you uh, cinch it up, and then go to the next one. Those pins will get in the way. You might want to take them out if you get too close to them. Basically, I'm going to sew all the way down to the anus and pull pins out as I go. Get right here on the end. Void feathers, you know. Kind of pulling pins out as I go. It helps me know to Keep things kind of straight. I'm going over oh, roughly maybe around a quarter of an inch, maybe slightly less. I'm not sure. Somewhere around a quarter of an inch. Not quite as compact as I was on the on the head, per se. I just uh cinch it up. Go to the next one. quarter of an inch apart from the first from the last one okay cinch it up yeah it's not a tight fit you don't want a tight fit so I'm tickled to death that it fit as good as it did 
by just a guesstimation. That's all I used was a guesstimation on it. A quarter of an inch apart. Make sure no feathers. Cinch it up. Go to the next one. close to the edges you can without going through, you know, um, making sure you have enough skin to tighten it together without it popping through. Cinch it together. Go to the next one so you can see it's already hid really good. Um, got a few more incisions here. Let me go ahead and pop these out too. And I'll see you when I get done. You get the idea. Grab me a piece of driftwood. And I got me some pretty, pretty short. I want to make sure they're not short enough to go through. They got to be shorter than an inch. Which means I got to get some really, just for the wood that he's hanging on. And, uh, I got to dig through my little thing of screws here. That's one. And that's one. These heads on these things go bad like super quick. So I don't have much time to dilly dally as far as you know making sure the head goes in there or whatever. Okay, that's in good, thank God. We use Dremel tool to start the other one. So it didn't go through. It's actually thin wood right there. We are up to get it started then. Little screws don't give you much time to mess around because they, uh, they go bad so quick. So I basically have to push hard as I can. Make sure it feeds in there. Well, this is what we got as far as a piece of driftwood. Um, I have to put something over those uh, little screw heads. Um, but we'll make it work. I'm going to make the judgment call. I'm going to put my king bait wire you know, for my duck. And I don't know what it's hanging. I kind of like the idea. Uh, right. I guess about right there. Be good. That works for me. That's a diameter of two gauge wires, so that's perfect. Or even a little bit bigger. Now we're going to go hang your bird up and then wire him up, tape him, get him ready to dry. Okay, here's a reference picture of what he's kind of wanting. Um, so the it looks like he's flying from the driftwood, uh, not much wire. I think he wants the wings about replicated about like that. So that's what I'm going to try to give him. And he also sent me this one. So it uh, looks like I've got a few options. Well, it looks like he's not super strict on the way he wants it. He's giving me a few options. And I appreciate that. But I'm, I want to... I guess I'm going to make it about as close as I can to the uh, piece of wood. But what I got here looks pretty awesome. Looks like I can bend that wire. I'm get as close as I can. Cool 
thing is, it's like the nat natural brew. Look at that. down there in that groove where they don't want to come out. So, uh, I think I'm good where I don't want to touch the wall. Yeah, that way you see I'm not really scraping the person's wall or anything, you know. It looks like I got to bend it a little bit. Come on, lift. It's right. Got to come. 
over if it can. It's about the right to it. It's got to come. Basically what's going on is I'm trying to replicate this picture and just bending and doing kind of weird things. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done bending. It's probably important you see a lot of this. Of course the lens you know, Legs definitely go closer to the body, of course. bit of toe attitude like that. Uh, that's, that's got that. Unless I'm pretty sure it does. Mm -hmm. 
and the different one that kind of forwards. <coughs> yeah, so yeah, you definitely want some loose forwards a little bit, so. Just like doing kind of like the other one, except on this side, of course. That's pretty good for so far. Huh? disappears all the time. I hate that about phones. We may look at a picture for hours sometimes. Come down. Come down the way like this. It definitely needs to look like it's trying to be land eventually or something. So. Get a good old sharp pair in your business. Um, let's get right up to the right where it comes up out of the foot, you know, where we put the wire in and we snip that bad boy off. Couple of pieces of cardboards 
Uh, you want to make sure they're at least the width of the foot. That way you can spread the foot out real good. And they're just uh, from a cardboard box that I got from the taxidermy supply company. I'm sure I'm not the only one that uses them. Okay, got me a couple of pieces of cardboard. Okay, I'll try to get up under the toe and basically bend that cardboard, uh, bend the cardboard and let the middle of the toe ride in the middle and then just stretch them out and pin them. And that's all the cardboard's for to pin the feet apart so they don't dry, you know, wrinkled up together. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now while the feet are still a little damp because they're bad for they're bad for going bad, I guess for right one. So I kinda like the attitude that I've got as far as the feet. So I'll go in there and I'll put that up against the toe like that. And then uh, see how it spread out? And then I uh, see I spread the other side out. That way you know you've got a good old toe that's, uh, you know, spread out. Yeah, and, You just kind of keep the feet a little bit wide. And it gives you a better idea how you need to adjust your feet. You know. It looks like you just basically got them stretched out. And that's fine. That's good. These legs want to dry. When they dry, they, uh, they definitely want to bend and do all kinds of weird stuff. I'm going to put one right there in the middle. Okay, he's got a good wide foot. To work with it, just try to make it look like the picture. Um, even the way the foot is spread, I'm trying to mimic the picture. I tend to use a cardboard. I'm going to kind of kick that toe back a little bit if I need to. A little bit extra leverage there to do that. Feet ain't bent much, which is yeah. If they're if they're doing final posts, they're probably not going to be bent. You know, I mean, if he's fixing the land and he's already got his feet bent. There's so many variations you can do. They give you free creative freedom. Take advantage of it. That's for sure. But this toe stretches out really good. Uh, that's Figure kind of stretched wide. Don't blame him, I Get that 
Up a lot of film doing this stuff. Well, that's how you do the feet, kind of just pin the feet in place. Well, even his uh, neck, his head has a little bit of attitude, uh, more than what I've got. That looks cool. Well, I think his skill forwards, so I will bend that like that, kick it out. Coming out of here, know where you can see them more. Possible like that. Maybe they're just, I don't know how that looks like. That works for me because a little bit up actually, the more I. actually pretty good. Basically if it does it, I mean if his wings do it, you can replicate what I'm getting at. Yeah you just gotta mimic the wings. You got wires in there, you just bend them however you gotta bend them to mimic what you're looking at. Not a bad idea to go ahead and preen some of these feathers. Uh, I just use my fingers to kind of help get the ends back together. Uh, it seems to help. Uh, you know, borax on there and stuff like that. Sometimes it kind of gets in the way. You know, bring the gaps out of the feathers while you got a chance, you know, while you're at it. Make a difference in how your bird looks. Uh, right here, I just use my, my fingers, index finger and my thumb, to bring the gaps out. You know. See how they come together real nicely? So it already makes a world of difference. Taking the gaps out of it, or it just takes a few seconds. Now, if you notice the uh, like the bottom of the secondaries, well, and the primaries too. Uh, you want them to ride even, kind of even with the back. I like to. It kind of depends on. You want at least to get above the uh, crest area. Huh? Yeah, right there. You ain't gotta go far, just uh, get about there. Now I can kind of control those primary. Kind of what I want, man. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm. I guess about like that. I'm gonna be able to see those under wings, I guess. 
you gotta be able to see the things too, so. feathers to get them to kind of, you know, to kind of fit. Um, we'll kind of lay up on the, if they lay on the wire, then they're going to be kind of even with the back a little bit. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of wires together. You got to be easy not to get them on the feathers of course. She's good enough for me. Okay, now for a little extra support. At least for the the primaries, I like to do that. I'll it from this way, of course. You know, sometimes at least the primaries, because the primaries, they get where they stick a little bit. Like here, I'll get a little uh, just general mask and take from the dollar store. It serves me extremely well, especially the water. The water tape like this. You get it under there and just uh, put it right down the middle of that wire. Make sure it sticks a little bit. spectacular but uh, see now you can uh, pin those primaries if you've got to be able to get them to separate a little bit and down down here you can separate just using wire or I mean tape I've done that a lot uh, you just basically you don't want no gaps. Now you can go through the process and drop it down and pin every feather equally spaced apart, get rid of any gaps. If you've got missing feathers, you can do that. And it helps uh, you know, kind of camouflage that you've got a missing feather or two. I've done that a lot. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna use tape. You like the way your feathers are spread, you put a little bit of something on the back, you know. It kind of flattens them out where they don't have as much of uh, it. It can do, is what I'm getting at. Okay. Tape does not connect with each other because it makes it real hard to I run into that too. It makes it hard to get it to come off. 
So keep that in mind too. Two sticky parts when they connect, uh, it can be rough. No gaps. Clear masking tapes where a lot of people use, you can kind of see what's going on, I guess. Or, you know, clear scotch tape. But it doesn't have to be. Or just, uh, and here I've got some feathers kind of up. I can take those in too. If you've got unruly feathers, go ahead and get them off. This tape comes off extremely easy. You know, after it's dry, you just rip it off real quick. Oh God, it comes off easy. So, there. Get some of those, flatten them out a little bit. No way they're not sticking up so much. show you on this side as well. This side's a little bit different. I, uh, I'm going to have to go in this way. To get the idea. Now if these little toes keep wanting to close up on you, Stay open. If you're afraid while it's shrinking, it's going to drop down, which they do sometimes. Okay, I'm pretty sure my mask can take the strong enough to do what I want it to do. Um, I want to separate these primaries. See, they're a little bit bunched up. Uh, I'm going to give it probably about like that or something. Um, in the back of these, on the other side of the cardboard, you can't see it. Um, they're kind of, they're not flat, I guess is the right word. They're kind of sideways a little bit. Uh, sometimes you can flatten stuff out. And, yeah, I got rid of the, uh, the gaps. There's no gaps in it. But I can see. No gaps that I can see. And... I will flatten these feathers out with a little bit of masking tape. Seems to help. This tape's not super strong, obviously. But it's usually strong enough to get the job done. You know, the end primary is always going to be the farthest one sticking out. That's perfect. And then I'll support it with some on this other side. take this stuff at worst and I'll hang it down. I don't think it's actually supposed to hang down that much. So. Let's see. Just like I did the other wing, except I'm doing it on, on this side. See that the only reason I don't want these feathers popping up, of course. The only reason I know is right there. No gaps, everything's good. Just finagle a little bit with his eyes, make sure that if we got his eyes earlier, you see me do his eyes earlier. 
so I'm just going to make sure they're good again. And remember, you can kind of tell because the eyelid, it gives you away where the eyelid is at. And it uh, makes your life a lot easier. I don't know how much it helps, but I've got a little, uh, you know, like polyfill or cotton or something like that. I was kind of showed to do this, kind of add a little bit of swellness to the uh, I think the lower part of the uh, It does work though. Kind of adds a little bit of swellness to it. Yeah, it rounds out the bottom of the mouth, I guess, is the right one. Oh, it does help. There's some soft parts under there, under his beak, and I'll go up through there, you know, poke into the top of the beak, just enough to hold his beak shut. Let it be. Make sure all this is like it's supposed to be. Now that works. That works. See, he's a little bit rounded in the face, which is what you want. Now, I'm going to the wire at the top because we're not going to move it by nothing until it's uh until it's ready so i go as close to the head as i can there we are bring this stuff back together like it's supposed to be kind of got a little bit of a i don't know what you call it Now you preen everything if you got feathers that ain't like you want them. Now's the time to preen them. Well, I totally forgot to get his tail. Here again, I just use tape. Separate his tail real good. Kind of hard to show you unless I do some real fancy camera work. Let's see how hard I can do this for me to get this. So I already snipped the wire off top of his head, so I don't want to get too carried away with a lot of motion, you know what I mean? But okay. uh, you just separate them on a good even spread. And you just take it. Oh, you get to do. There, I think that's it. 
Not super spectacular. Uh, there we are. Uh, we have go about like, uh, hold on. There we go. That. There we are. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot more to this tail than the person sees. Okay, we got this one. Basically, just separate it, put the tape to it. So I'm going to, uh, there's one. You should have already, is that a good little tail spread there? That's what you're after. Well, I got him this way. I'm going to go ahead and crane the back. We got kind of flat where he's laying on his back. So I've got to fluff some of his feet back up. Bottom is just a, almost like you just touch it a little bit. It brings everything back like it's supposed to be. That's his tail feathers. See you in a couple of weeks. I'm just going to start taking everything off. Ended up using a uh, clothespin on the beak to keep it shut. Uh, a lot of times a pin works, but clothespins work too. Um, take out the clothespins. Take off all your pins. All your pins come off right here. Don't need them anymore. Pins holding the that goes out, goes out, all these come out. jerk it real fast. It's going to stick harder to the cardboard than it will the feather, but the same thing applies. You jerk as fast as you can. if you know what I mean. Don't rip in the opposite direction of the feather. You know what I mean. Um, right here we got one. Something on the back. Faster the better. Place where the wire is uh, glued together or something, you might want to just uh, 
you know, snip them off for the time being like that. Uh, I don't know, I don't get too fancy with it. It should pull out relatively easy. That is the wire in the cardboard. Depending on how far you went in with it, it should come out pretty easy anyhow. There we are. Oh yeah, make sure you take the tape off the tail too, uh, and back. So. I'm going to move these feathers even out of the way to make sure I get it as good and as deep as possible. And I know these feathers are going to go back down and go over that piece of wire where it come out of the body, come out of the wing, you'll never even see it. Same with this side. A lot of times if there's a feather in the way, I move that feather out of the way just to get a bite on it. And the feather goes back over and you can't even see where the wire was. Like magic. But a lot of times if you look real close, you'll see little holes. And I've got a little bit of caulking. Anything, um, anything that'll... Uh, Cover that hole up. Those pinholes, uh, they will cover up and you'll be in fine shape, is what I'm getting at. Uh, they're so small, most people don't even care about that anyway. But you can cover them up with pretty much anything that you've got. It will get hard. Um, it's so small it shouldn't affect. Um, Coke is probably the way to go with it. If you got one you want to open it uh, for this thing here. Yeah, it don't take much, in other words. That was not a bad time to preen the feathers together. You know, the ends. Um, you know, they got little split ends. Some of it's from gunshot. You can't help all of it. But you can get a lot of it. That's gunshot right there. But you can still preen it a little bit, make it a little better. Any gaps? They usually come right out. That's gunshot. See how those are coming out? It just makes an overall neat looking appearance if you can get the gaps out. And a lot of times it just takes a little attention. They're willing to come back together. You just got to be willing to preen them with your fingers and use a pen or whatever you got to use to get them. So, it's a good step towards making them look neat. We're going to tape him up so we can uh, paint him. You know, so we can avoid overspray is what I'm getting at. You know, this thing would not stick too good. It sticks good with each other, but it doesn't want to stick good on my feathers. So we can get as close to the beak as possible. Four. 
course, when the feathers meet the um, when the feathers meet the legs, I'll try to protect protect that as much as possible. Put some tape around where the feathers meet the legs. Well, that's kind of what I got, and you do the other leg the same way. That's kind of what it looks like. The first coat I've got is base coat signals. Put a good little coat on there. It gives the uh, paint something in here to real good. And I say it's not bad to go ahead and put a couple of those. Yeah, the beak on this bird, it must be normal for them uh, to have the beaks on the end kind of wore down on both sides. Maybe a little bit wore down. I guess that's normal. Apparently. So, I don't know. as many coats as you want to over it. Now it says put a medium coat over everything except the black on the end of the beak. Put up on top here, I see what's supposed to be solid black. I'll go ahead and get that now all I can. Put here on the side, it comes down a little bit. Comes down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right here on the end of the beak. Always helps to have a reference picture or a reference picture on your phone, either one. All that's supposed to be black right there. <laughs> yeah, that band actually does. It's supposed to even be down here. Um, Cleaning. Yeah, notice in this picture here, see how the white goes past the the upper part of the beak down to the bottom part of the beak. Uh, it kind of makes a straight line and comes around. And uh, so, um, in other words, I'm gonna have to replicate all that. Uh, I'm gonna turn my air pressure down or do something, and uh, it's not gonna be fun. But the whole beak is supposed to be the first. The first uh, color is off-white, and the whole beak is supposed to get it, so... And you may want to thin your paint down a whole lot to get it to do what you want it to do. I'm going to go ahead and get what I know is going to be white first. Go ahead and paint everything else. I'm not going to get carried away with it. Call for medium heavy though, so. If I can still see the outline of what I painted, that's good for me. So all that's kind of. Forget you can call it a medium heavy. the idea. Multiple angles doesn't hurt either. Oh, are you sure you got it yet? You know, sometimes they're a little wrinkled. I 
all need to be some black. I kind of see what needs to be what and what uh, what doesn't, in other words. Even on the beak right there. We got real dark around these nostrils. Like, hmm. Sure it is. That's good enough for me. It's gonna get dark anyway. You know? so that ought to be a medium heavy. Okay, I'm supposed to use a selfish blue on the beak. Even from what I've read, um, the uh, consensus is the beak is gray. Some say blue gray. Some say bluish. The majority of them just say gray, grayish. So I guess some birds have more of a bluish beak, and some birds have more of a grayish. Uh, let your bird determine. Um, that I guess it looks almost paints gray to me. Um, you know, a lot of your older paint schedules before paints gray came around consisted of like blue first and then a darker like black or something later or something. Um, not saying that's the case here, um, and I'm not going to deviate. So, but it does look paints grayish to me. It really does. Like somebody could probably use paints gray and then go over the paints gray with a little bit of pintail gray. And something like that and probably come up with the, the exact same results okay yeah I'm gonna try not to cover up the wide areas if I can um, it says to spray away from what you want to keep uh, black so this is a good medium coat sometimes it helps to hold the bird in your hand, but sometimes you don't have that luxury like right now. I've already eliminated the white. It's supposed to be around. The a brush has come in a lot heavier on this, I think. Just like a little brush. Okay, I'm gonna angle away to try to keep the uh, white stripe going. In other words, it's, it's more intense than it needs to be, uh, unfortunately, but that uh, tends to happen. It's a little bit more intense than I wanted, actually, but, well, now it calls for uh, to lighten up the blue a little bit, and uh, it calls for widgeon blue, but the closest thing I've got is uh, turkey head blue, turkey blue, it's for turkey heads, uh, but it's pretty close, so I'm going to Tone down 
think it says you want to tone down the blue, which I definitely understand that. Paint's coming off. Oh, well. I knew it was going to. I knew it was going to. Think that's good enough for me. Another color I don't have is Pintail Gray, which is a dark gray. It's um, pretty dark. Um, I've got a light gray. I could go over it and tone it in, you know, uh, you know, with my black, but um, I think I'm going to try to mix it and make it. Um, I've got Striper Gray. That's all I got that's closest to a gray. I, I mean, you can always mix black and white and get it to the consistency you want but there's like a color a little color picture in the catalogs you know you know they sell the paints according to colors and that's what I'm going by as, as far as the darkness um, for the pintail gray it's pretty dark so I'm gonna add a little bit of black and see what I can come up with we're getting closer ah, it's getting pretty close and still off uh, the striper gray looks like it's got a little bit of green in it, but we're going to go a little bit darker and I'm going to call it good. So I think I'm pretty close. Um, looks pretty close anyway. And, uh, let's post a lightly mist over it. Got my pintail gray uh, that I made myself. I guess you Close to, right towards, towards the back and under the nostrils. Well, I got my airbrush where it'll turn down. Uh, I just over tightened it, I think. Uh, yeah. I got more of my pintail gray that I made. I turned my airbrush down to about uh, 15. I think it's about taking the blue out of it. There's like a border. I'm, I'm using this as a reference picture. Notice the white where all the white goes. I'm going to replicate that as good as I can without getting in your way, which is not going to be easy. down on the bottom part you can see it comes down to the bottom beak as well so now this dip right in the middle it's it's pretty pronounced I 
I got a reference picture uh, right there. Shows how it is from the front. Comes in handy. calls for a little small little bit of white uh, bordering the upper and lower part of the nostril about like that well, I made things a little hard on me by uh, painting over the white on the beak um, it happens It's better to go this way, but when you're doing a video or something, you don't always have that luxury, you know. I got a Q-tip. I'm going ahead and taking the black off the uh, off the end of the beak. Uh, you know, man, you ain't got to do it. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna do it. So I know where my black band is. Or at least have a good idea. You know, where it ends and all that stuff. It'll work with me. Because for natural flesh, it says it's supposed to help warm it up a little bit. I don't know what that means. In other words, I don't think it's the end of the world if you don't use this color. a very light coat. It just takes some of the black off, I guess. I don't know. In other words, you're not looking at just straight black. Yes. What we're getting at. Medium coat. You get both sides of you know, the toes. I didn't even get underneath. Now, a lot of times on these birds, tinning is the way to go almost, like, you know, instead of going heavy with your paint. Uh, probably depends on the bone, though. But. It's easy to overpaint when your bird sometimes, you know, it's, it's not hard to do. And it helps to be able to be pretty much about everything that you know you're supposed to do. Um, because it means you can make money where other people won't make money. If that makes any sense. Like there's people out there that won't do a duck. There's people out there that won't do a fish. Um, and there's people out there that don't do deer. They just do fish. Um, people are they all got their different style, different ways of doing things. But if you want to make money, it's not a bad idea to uh, be able to do them all.
you know, when the time comes. That way you're always got business. You know, if you're too selective in what you get, you won't get no business sometimes, depending on where you're at and how much flow you get. Well, I think that's about what it calls for. Just a medium coat, just to cover the toes, you know. Um, if I see another painted spot, I'm gonna throw some, you know, except for the wedding. Um, just a medium coat. Nothing spectacular. That was a diver gray, which is made especially for div diving ducks. That's one of the main things diver grays for. Now I've got my dark brown or black umber or something like that. This is dark brown. Mm -hmm. Basically just putting some paint on what's already dark. Strong in the middle and lighter just fade into the uh as you get towards the toes you want to go lighter. I'm just gardening what I already seen from the previous step. the knuckles and once we, once we go ahead and do those it's a little hard to see them Like detail, detail work right there where the toes join together. That's all detail work. We put kind of a wash on them, you know, angle spray or something. Add a little bit of color, but not much. The back toe gets, gets dark. The back of the leg, the back of the feet, and the back of the toes get dark. Uh, this right here, that gets dark. Go right again, add a little detail right in between the, yeah, right there, add a little detail. Go ahead and find the knuckles if you can find them. There's one, there's one, there's one. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Middle. Oh, The one just to look for real bright and gray, you want to add a little bit of color to it. Okay, probably do the toenails with it and be done with it. But, calls for black. You think it's too bright? You can angle spray and bring out some detail in these legs, you know. Places where uh, you can bring out detail. I'll go ahead and bring out the detail. Just a you can get rid of that real bright colored uh, diver gray. You want to add a little detail to it if you can.
See how it from the rear? Uh, you can do the same thing back here. See, it shows you where the markings are. Yeah, see how I added a little detail? Um, I'm gonna try it on this side. It's hard to get in the camera because You can see the detail come up through there. Dark, let it let it hit places. That worked for me. That's the back anyway. But you can see I did kind of darken the front a little bit. Brought out some stuff. Um, that helps. Okay, now I got my jet black. Darken my toenails. Kind of let it grow on there from the end. And work its way. Make sure you get both sides. It's real easy to not get too carried away and not get both sides. And that gets it. All the toenails get it. It don't take much. Kind of let it grow on there. Yeah, the beak. I want you to get real close with it and angle spray from the rear. And it's a good time to see, you know, paint over that damaged area, maybe where it's been rubbed off. Remember earlier, it was like really. There wasn't no black there; it was all rubbed off. So. There we are. Okay, now you got a little bit of nostril detail. Basically, I just throw a little bit of black in there to add a little bit of nostril detail. I'll add a little bit of detail. Okay, uh, got my, still got my black. And right up here underneath. If you would, you can paint all this underneath. Be careful. Don't get it on your beak. And keep coming. And you can darken the line, you know, between the upper and lower maxillary. Now uh, you have to get way up in there. Where the beak separates you know. Now I've got my satin sheen. I'm just going to go over my feet with it. More of a protectant than anything. I'm not going to see the back that much, but I'm going to put it on there. Give him a deal. Got a little bit of gloss, but not much. I'll go ahead and do a 
remove all your tape. And now we start cleaning up our overspray where our paint got where we didn't want it to go. What I'll do is I'll get a little lacquer thinner uh, on a Q-tip. Maybe roll it one time so you have a little control of how much lacquer thinner is going. And then uh, you can roll it and get it to come off. See how it's coming off real good? It would have been more ideal if we uh, if the tape would have adhered a little better, but I'm not sure what's going on with that tape. It wouldn't hold. It held for a little while, but that was it. It's a long, tedious process. We'll get it looking good, though. Went right off. If I get a little bit of clay or something on my eyes, I've got my exacto knife. Yeah, a lot of this stuff will just come right off. And then let's clean it with lacquer thinner too, you know, to you get your eye real good and clean that way. Sure. What I like to do is do a little spot of gloss right on the eyes. Sometimes right there on the nostril, just a little bit of a wet look. I do all my animals that way, no matter how big or small, you know. I get a little lacquer thinner, go over the eye, kind of help clean anything that might be on there. It tends to help. It sure does. Now I've got a little bit of gloss top coats. And I'll just hit that eye spot on. Just to make a good wet looking eye. Maybe hit the nostril on both sides just a little bit. And that's it for me. Got any screws or anything you need to cover up? Nothing beats um, Spanish moss. You can get it. Kind of cover screw holes and stuff like that. I like cat tools. So I'm going to. Staple some plants on the back, take off some of the excess, and let's see what we got here. This will look better on his wall. Well, here's what I got. <laughs>